Hi, hi, Rushna, Sadia, Shafatibi, Swati Shri, and Mohira, Mariam, Fu, Anam. How are you guys doing? Hmm? Okay, that's good. Am I audible, guys? Mohira, am I audible? Yes, ma'am, yes, you are. Okay, 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 that's great. So I wonder, you guys are going for part three and nobody wants to speak, nobody wants to utter a single word. Uh, I don't know what you guys are going to do in part three, okay? So try to communicate, okay? Try to communicate. This is not the way how it is, you know? You have to communicate, you have to, uh, you know, they kill your shyness, it's not like that part three is going to be a kind of, you know, the uh, exam as a listener. Of course, you have to present, you have to do so many things, right? So let's, let's, uh, you know, they discuss and let's talk how you guys are uh, preparing and how you guys think about yourself that where you stand in your preparation for part three. This is just exactly, I think, one month that we are, you know, the coming close to exam. So how you guys are preparing and where do you, uh, you know, the scale yourself in your preparation? Anyone? Let's let's just have a, you know, the random chip chat and then I will try to give my input that how you have to utilize your one month. Anyone? Hmm? Mm -hmm. No, nobody is going for exam. Everybody is just here for session. Bhakti, how about you? Hmm? Swati, how about you? Hmm? I'm going for number exam. Okay. Which center, sweetheart? Hmm? Kolkata. Kolkata. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. So you are preparing with somebody? Yeah, I mean, I'm preparing. Mm -hmm. I'm doing stations, but mm -hmm. still... Uh, struggling right yes. <laughs> simple word mm -hmm. struggling <laughs> no problem no problem you know this is a very common uh you know the kind of um feeling for every candidate there is that of course we are preparing when we are preparing and uh, you know the of course we don't know where are we heading in our preparation isn't it so yes, yes. and so how do you plan for yourself in the last one month hmm um, I am yet to finish my first revision actually. Mm -hmm. so I need mm -hmm. to do at least uh, one more revision. Uh, I'm thinking of doing, but uh, I don't know whether I'll be able to. Okay, so can you please elaborate a word revision for me, please? Mama, I have done module wise. I, uh -huh. uh, I took one module for a week. So I have uh -huh. done all the stations, GDGs, and PILs. I did. I did once. But mm -hmm. uh, I've started uh, brushing up my memory mm -hmm. uh, and probably for the past uh, 15, 20 days. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is, uh, I'm looking at it uh, again as a new one. No, don't. That's what, that's what, you know, that is the feeling you have to kill, first of all. Okay. So, which um, I mean, whatever you have told me, what I can gather is that you have uh, done, you are done with your syllabus once. Okay. If I'm not mistaken. So, if you have done, uh, you know, the your syllabus once, so it means you are good to go. All you need to do is now you have to categorize. Okay. Now you have to prioritize your stations. Now you have to think of, uh, you know, the stations from every module, for example. And then you have to shortlist them, okay? Because in every exam, there is going to be a hot favorite station, you know, from every module, perhaps there are like, I mean, five, six, seven stations must to do station. I'm sure, you know, if you are taking any coaching from some mentor, so she or he must be telling you that, you know, this is a RCUD hot favorite question, you have to do it. So now you will sit with yourself. Now you are going to shortlist your stations. Okay, so this is okay. how you can, you know, this is how you can uh, sum up your preparation. And even mm -hmm. in even, you know, by the end of that revision, for example, you have shortlisted your 50 questions out of, you know, the whole syllabus 50 stations, I must say. So even after that, you think that you need some extra time. So then you can plan again. 
okay so this is how you know it works of course nobody can be uh, like i mean uh, you know the master of all these stations because syllabus is so huge so all the time what you need to do is you have to categorize you have to prioritize and then you have to reset your schedule and reset your target again it's not like that you know you just need to do from the scratch from a to z of course that is going to be very cumbersome isn't it that is going yes. to be very cumbersome. But yes, you know, um, I'm I'm happy that if you are done with your syllabus once, so don't feel this way that, you know, you didn't do anything and don't think that you just need to do revision of whole syllabus again. All right. So this is okay. going to be a tip from my side to you. So I hope it will work. <laughs> and if it works, okay. you have to send me a text. Okay. <laughs> sure, ma'am. Sure, sure, definitely. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's great. That's great. Hi, Abir. How are you? Aisha, how are you? So anyone, anyone else would like to share with me how you guys are planning to utilize your time in the last one month? What is your plan? What is your idea and what you have done so far? Hmm? Anyone, be open. Hmm? Yes, ma'am. And honest. <laughs> Hi, Fu, my girl, how are you? Hmm? Uh, I'm fine, ma'am, but uh, I, uh -huh. I actually, I, I've gone through uh -huh. uh, all of the syllabus uh, with uh, all of the um, uh, old questions, mm -hmm. uh, what of the stations uh, I've done once, but just only once. And I'm still no, um, uh, out of my mind whenever I try to memorize them. And it's very difficult for me. Uh -huh. you, know, you know, you don't have to memorize. You know, you don't yeah. have to memorize. This is not part two. <laughs> you cannot memorize a template and you, you cannot just go there and you, you cannot just, you know, the utter, if I have given you any template, for example, you know, so you cannot memorize those lines because us human, you know, the our brain work in a, works in a very different, you know, the direction when we are in exam. So somehow, you know, in, in that particular situation, you might not remember the whole template. So forget, cut this word from your dictionary that you have to memorize part three. Okay, you don't have to memorize. Yes, in terms of if it is structured discussion task, then yes, you have to memorize something because that is going to be purely guideline or TOG article, isn't it? But for the simulated patient task, sweetheart, it all needs practice. So far, how, you know, the what I know about you and I know you, you know, you are good. Your communication skill is good. So you just need to work on how you are going to cut your history short and how you can utilize your rest of the, you know, the time in the management. Okay. So that you need to just work on. So I think that is pretty doable, isn't it? So don't memorize anything. No, no, no. Yeah. Don't memorize anything. If you will try to, trust me, you will be lost. Okay. Yes. Hmm. don't memorize anything so in the last one month uh, so of course you are with me so of course we are revising and we are trying to rehearse as many stations as possible so i think overall you are good to go all you just need to do is just just stay calm and stay focused and just just you know the go on and don't just you know the feel this way that you haven't done anything or you cannot you know the recall anything or you don't know how to you know the behave in a station all all the time what you need to think is of course you know because labor is so huge and it is it is kind of impossible that you know we are practicing almost 100 plus stations and it is nearly impossible that somebody is practicing 200 plus stations i think this is this is a foolish idea why because our brain has a capacity right so don't mm -hmm. always think of numbers you know the, the quantity rather than quality even if you are doing 50 stations, five, five stations from each module, but you know the, uh, you know, the central idea of that particular module. So I think you can do very good in exam because you know how to go about that particular module, isn't it? So never think of that if, and secondly, Fu, you know, never think of some, that if somebody is practicing or if somebody is rehearsing so and so stations, so I have to do that as well. No, everybody is unique. Everybody has, you know, the different capacity. Everybody has, you know, the different kind of, uh, you know, the, you can say memory or, you know, the kind of uh, strength, or you can say even stamina, because it, re it requires a lot of stamina as well. <laughs> if somebody is practicing 14 stations a day, I think that is also bad. If somebody is practicing, you know, two stations a day, that is also bad. So you have to have a moderate solution. 
for example, you know, you have to practice at with your study buddy at least four to five or maximum six. Don't do more than that. Don't do more than that because that is going to saturate your neurons. By the end of the day, you will be frustrated with yourself. Okay, so just just hang in there. First of all, just revise your you know the guides uh, guidelines and talk articles in this uh, you know in terms of if you have to do structured discussion task. Like I said earlier to Swati that you have to shortlist your uh, you know the stations, number of stations. Okay, for example, you know the which which you think can come in exam, okay, for sure. So of course, everybody has a guess. We all are doctors. We, we all are, you know, <laughs> going through a couple of exams all, all the time, you know, since I don't know how long. So yes, everybody has a wild guess that, okay, this station can come, this station can come. So I have to do this. I have to do this. And now in the last month, I will tell you how we are going to strategize that how we are going to utilize, okay? So thank you so much, Fu. Thank you so much, Swati, for you know the sharing your experience with me. So let's go. Let's let's see you know what I have in my bucket and what I can give you <laughs> out of my experience that how you can utilize your one month before exam. All right. So uh, everybody knows about exam, right? So we have got fourteen stations, right? So out of them, simulated patient tasks are going to be there, and structured discussion tasks are going to be there as well. And uh, I'm sure everybody knows by now that we have got, you know, the combination. Either we can have nine simulated plus five structured discussion. We can have half and half. Or we can have, you know, the eight and, uh, you know, the six as well. So it all depends on, you know, the college strategy and all. And sometimes, you know, two modules can be coupled into one station. So when we come out of the exam, we, we might, you know, the feel that, okay, this module was not being tested in exam. Okay. Like, for example, antenatal care and maternal medicine, you know, maternal medicine disorders, they, you know, the overlap. Core surgical skills along with post-op, they overlap. So sometimes, you know, they give one stations out of them. Sometimes you may see, you know, the two questions. Sometimes you may see two questions. So these are that, you know, way you have to cover your whole syllabus. Okay. So out of 14 or out of 18, you know, the modules, you just need to sit with yourself. You just need to shortlist important tasks from, for example, 10 from antenatal care, 10 from maternal medicine disorder, five from here, five from here. So I think even if you do 14 modules, so I think they make almost 100 plus or 80 plus. So that is pretty doable, isn't it? So if you just, you know, utilize your time properly and if you just stay focused, stay calm and just, you know, the revise. So this exam is fairly doable. I have done it. Okay. So many candidates around have done it. So you can. Okay. So you you also can do it. All you need to do is just, just you know, the, um, I mean, just never think of that I cannot do this because syllabus is so huge. I cannot speak. So far, you know, if your communication is good, you know, you can, you can do very good in exam. So make sure that you are not, you know, the uh, being with this feeling all the time that you cannot do it, you cannot do it. Certainly you can do it. Okay. So after this, you know, we all know that um, the exam pattern is again, you know, the two minute reading time is going to be then 10 minutes inside the cubicle and usually five to six or, you know, the combination can be structured discussion. Role players can also be there and four can be with the lay examiners. This is going to carry high marks in exam because lay examiners are going to look at you differently that how layman person look at you while you are behaving in a hospital. Okay, if you are, you know, the, um, you know, the good listener, if you are smooth in your consultation, if you are paying attention to patients, you know, the kind of concerns, if you are trying to answer patients' concerns, then yes. And plus, at the same time, you are keeping the patient safety and your safety in mind as well in the management. So yes, you know, lay examiner can give you good marks, okay? And in some stations, maybe I have heard that, you know, the role player also have got marks that, you know, in some stations which are important, um, I think that can be breaking bad news or, you know, the wherever some emotions are involved, wherever communication is involved, right? So role player can also give you, you know, the marks in terms of that, you know, either role player wants to see you in real life so two marks, maybe or may not be one mark or not at all. 
zero marks. So each and every mark counts. So I'm sure you guys will agree with me that you know the each and every mark counts in uh, you know the MRCOG all you know in all parts almost part one, part two, part three. So yeah, you know this is very important that uh, you know the you are struggling, you are working for. Uh, even a single mark so always think of where I can gain you know marks for myself okay so always think always look you know into the station that okay this way or that way I can you know try to get one mark all right so do try to do that some of the stations can be linked to station okay and they may not you know be 100% linked but in my exam, it happened once that, you know, they have told me, you know, in one station, it was, uh, you know, the IVF, uh, IVF patient was having OHSS and, uh, you know, that was the station and very next station was that the uh, patient you have seen earlier in the previous station, now she has conceived and she is coming with twin pregnancy and now she wants to ask about that, you know, the her delivery options and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so sometimes, you know, it, it can be like this as well, but but maybe not always. And uh, mind it, there is no rest station because almost all exams are face to face. There is no break, total 168 minutes, and then of course it's going to be over. So for total 168 minutes, you will be moving from one station to other station, to other station, and other station. Okay, hang on. Um, has anybody, um, you know, appeared in face-to-face -face exam before or, or you guys, you know, if you don't want to share, don't, because here I want to share one important thing, okay, because when we are moving from one station, one cubicle to the other cubicle and cubicles are going to be so close, okay, cubicles are going to be so close. So sometimes what happens is that, you know, you can overhear, you know, this person talk and sometimes you have to concentrate so hard. So that's why concentration is very necessary in exam as well. Although, you know, they, they, uh, when they are going to give you, um, you know, the pre-exam debrief, they are going to tell you that, okay, you have to be in your moderate tone. You don't have to be shouting all the time. You don't have to be, you know, in, in a high tone. Okay. So make sure that you are practicing in that way as well, because in face-to-face -face exam, Sometimes, you know, I have heard that, you know, people do complain about, you know, the, the particular candidate as well, although it doesn't affect, you know, the score, final score, but overall, ethically, morally, it doesn't look good, right? So, so prepare and, you know, the make yourself into that aura that you are working and you are using your normal tone, okay? It's not that high and your pitch is normal, your pace is okay, you know, you are not just running, you are not just like, I mean, kind of... um. Uh, uttering whatever you have memorized so far okay one one thing important you know this is for your you know the voice or you can say the pace second thing i want to address here is uh you know the way you dress up your dress code and the way of course you know once you will walk you will run from here and you know from this cubicle to that cubicle isn't it so don't wear you know the heels this is for girls and even for boys as well, because in RCOG, they have got, you know, the wooden flooring and sometimes, you know, the tap, 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 tap. It really causes a lot of headache. I have been there twice. Okay. So, you know, the, um, and really it, it causes a lot of headache. So we are, you know, the comfortable pumps or shoes and don't wear flats or heels. Okay. Which can make a lot of noise. So this way, you know, we can take care of ourselves because we have to run for three hours, straight three hours and others as well. This is going to be a general tip. And then attire again, attire should be comfortable. Okay. And uh, don't wear bright colors. And usually, you know, the light colors are very important. Mm. Generally, you know, if we talk about the official colors, black or blue, okay, or even if you want to wear any, you know, the other color, black and uh, other than black and blue. So don't wear, you know, the sharp colors. They should not be orange. They should not be pink. They should not be floral printing. And plus, don't wear a lot of makeup. Okay, simple lip gloss, or if you really want to do any eye, so you can wear, you know, the liner or mascara, I think that is okay, but not more than that. Don't wear, don't overdo anything. Okay, so, so behave a professional one, plus people who, you know, they take scarves, okay, 
who take hijab or anything. So make sure that it is very fixed from the beginning, from the start, when you are, you know, reaching to the exam hall. So it's not all the time you are fixing your hijab on your head. Okay. And it should not be very, again, flowery. It should not be very colorful. So I think simple, you know, the any, any color is going to surface. Okay. Black, blue, white, whichever color, but, but it should not be bright again. Okay. And for, you know, the people who think that, you know, uh, they have to wear jewelry. So I would suggest that don't wear, you know, the much of jewelry in terms of, you know, the rings, earrings, bracelets, and blah, blah, anklets. Don't do that. Okay. So maintain your, you know, the complete professional look because we are in a professional competitive exam. So you need to look as a complete package. Okay. That what if this doctor is moving in NHS hospital, so how he or she will look. For the boys, again, you know, you have to have a very professional look again. Please don't go into in your PJs, okay? Don't go in your jeans. So wear, you know, the comfortable attire. Again, it should be blue, black, or any color which, which you are comfortable with. Yes, a tie gives, you know, the very good look uh, in professional exams. And please uh, do your hairs as well. And uh, that's it. So again, you know, it, it has to be very professional, okay? For the shoes, like I said, be extremely careful with the shoes because for two hours, three hours straight, you have to run. So, you know, because this happened with me <laughs> in my first exam when I was in London. So what happened was, so I was wearing heels. So generally I don't wear heels. So it was foolish of me. And because, you know, nobody has guided me at that time. So I was just walking, walking, walking. And by the time I entered into station nine, my feet were hurting me so bad that by the end I came into this, I was unable to talk because of pain. Okay. Because I was having a lot of pain in my, you know, the feet and legs. And of course, you know, the headache as well. So because those were heels, although comfortable heels, but still, you know, they were making noise. So make sure that you are not doing this mistake. Okay. So because we have to move from one station to the other station. All right. Clear everyone. Any question? Mm -hmm. Any question, guys? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So no, no question. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right. Can we wear long dress or dress pants and shirt mandatory? No, no, no. You can wear long dress. You mean to say a kind of maxi or frock? Uh, I think you, you, you can fumble in that. Okay. So I would suggest dress pant is okay. And long dress, if you want to, uh, you know, if you are from, you know, the uh, Southeast Asia, so you can wear a, you know, the short kurta along with dress pant. Okay. And if you want to wear hijab or anything, so you can do that. If not, it's okay. All right. And yes, if you want to open your hairs, but tie your hairs like these students. Okay. They should be tied nicely. And not all the time, you know, you are poking your hairs and, you know, you are, you are doing your hairs. You, you wear a bias so no, it's, it is possible in exam. Okay. But I would suggest that, you know, uh, better not to do because it doesn't give any professional look. Okay. We can, we can do, we can do, but make sure that you are maintaining a decorum. But otherwise, a bias is fine. Uh, but again, you know, make sure that you are comfortable because you have to run from one cubicle to the other cubicle. Okay, Lela. So I think you can wear dress pant, you can wear, you know, the shirt up to the knee, knee length, okay, and uh, full sleeves and with your hijab or anything. I think that can, that can, you know, that is doable. Pretty, I mean, many of my friends, you know, have done that because they also used to wear abaya and hijab and all. So, you know, they were like very much okay in exam because in exam, nobody is going to look at you at all because everybody will be running for their own self. <laughs> okay. So this is how guys it is going to be. So you can see that how close, how small these cubicles are. All right. So exactly, exactly. It is going to be like this the station number one. And you know, the question is going to be posted outside. So this is how it is going to be. And then you will, and there is going to be a strong bell two minutes time and 10 minutes time. Okay, so you will hear and there are going to be moderators who are going to be standing here, uh, standing here, and they are going to be pushing you from one cubicle to the no need, no need of white coat, sweetheart, no need at all. Okay, no need of white coat. Don't bring, don't overdo anything. 
they know you all are doctors. <laughs> okay? So they know you all are doctors. So no need to do that. You will be in RCOG if you are in RCOG or in any, any center. So of course, no need to do that. All right? Okay. So this is how it is going to be, guys. Two minutes time, you are going to read your question and the same questions is, is going to be, uh, you know, the pasted on your table as well inside. Even if you didn't finish your question outside in two minutes time because that happens sometimes okay because if you are coming from this you know the station and somehow you know it went so bad and now you are standing so somehow this is this is human you know the psychology we may lose over 20 seconds 30 seconds or something so so don't worry about it same question is going to be pasted on your table inside all right. So you can, you know, when you will enter into the cubicle, you will do your greetings and, you know, you will introduce yourself and then you can excuse yourself and you can ask, you know, the role player examiner, can I take just, you know, 30 seconds to read this question, please? So, you know, they will surely say yes, because these 10 minutes are yours. So, I mean, utilize them, you know, how you want to do. Okay. So make sure that, that you are just, you know, the keeping your composure all the time. So don't be upset about anything, okay? Two minutes are yours and 10 minutes are yours as well. But make sure, of course, that will come with practice that how you are finishing your station in 10 minutes time, okay? So one by one, you will be moving, you will be moving and you will be moving. So make sure that your, you know, the voice, your, um, you know, the uh, pace is, is very normal. You are not, you know, the your tone is not very high. It is not very sharp that it is, you know, the overheard into the other cubicle because Sometimes, you know, it really creates a very, uh, you know, the bad taste in exam. Okay. All right. So now this is very important. Yeah. So how do we do revision strategies? Everybody has different strategy because everybody is unique and everybody has, you know, the uh, different idea and different framework that how we are going to do this stuff in our last month and how we are going to do, how we are going to revise, isn't it? So this way, you know, this is from, you know, the Willy Online one talk article somehow, you know, I came across with, so I really find it so, you know, the good. So they say that, you know, evidence-based revision strategies are there. They say studying and revising for exams is a major part of success. Of course, yet students do not always receive coaching in how best to learn or revise. Many students begin by using the same techniques they worked for them at school, medical school, they meant, such as re revisiting material again and again and making notes. So researches have shown, however, that these techniques alone have a limited impact on long-term knowledge retention and academic success. Because if you just need to look at your notes or you are just making notes all the time, even one week before exam, so, I mean, this is not going to help anyway. So what do they do out of, you know, the studies they have shown, shown that successful students use a variety of learning strategies, which include retrieval practice, elaboration, concrete examples, and concept maps and dual coding, and interleaving. Interleaving, how, for example, if I have done antenatal care today, and my plan is to come back after 15 days. And in these 15 days, I will do some other modules. So what it will do is that, you know, I have made my concept clear about antenatal, clear, antenatal care module. I have done, you know, the um, examples or you can say the stations. I have done practice and I will come back again and I will revisit my own, you know, the practice, what I have done. So I will retrieve my own knowledge as well. Okay, so because I know that antenatal care is so huge, like we have been discussing earlier. So if antenatal care module is there, and if I have to do 25 plus station from it, so what if I am just using my 10 days for this module? So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm you know, the losing time for other modules. This way or that way, I have to do almost 14, 15, or, you know, the say 18 module practice, isn't it? So it is very much important that, you know, you, you, you know, the strategized yourself, you all the time, you know, the, you reset your own schedule all the time, you reset your target all the time, you know, you are just, you know, keep coming. If you think that, you know, you are, you are missing something out of any module. So, okay, come back again. 
come back again okay or if you think that okay this module um, i'm weak in so okay i'll pick that module first and then you know i will give two three four days to that module and then i will move to another module but don't just stick to one module because i'm so weak so i will be giving 10 days 15 days to one module no 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 this should not happen and this should not be the exact strategy for exam so how do you do of course you know in the last month what do you do you you plan yourself and plan in terms of planning of studies planning of travel planning of expenses, planning of your job, planning of your house, planning of, you know, your own self-care as well, isn't it? So you just need to sit with yourself. Don't look here and there because you yourself are your biggest critic and you yourself know your circumstances better than anyone else, okay? So don't look here and there. Don't always look here and there and don't always look for, you know, the any shortcut at all, okay? By now, you know, if you know everything about part three, so what you need to do is you just need to sit with yourself and you just need to prioritize what you need to do. You have to plan. So make a comprehensive schedule. Don't forget self-care. It is very much important. Then you have to do a practice. You have to revise your guideline and talk article. Then, of course, travel plan. And then once you travel, then you have to prepare for your big day. Isn't it? So what do you do? You plan, you do it, you study and you act. And then, you know, anytime you can break this circle and anytime, you know, you can, you can come back again. If you feel that you are tired, okay, come back to this point. Take a, take a small break, you know, even for a day or so, even for a few hours, you know, you can go hang out, watch movie, you know, go with friends, go to a party or anything. Self-care is very important for, you know, every exam there is. Because if you are demotivated all the time, if you are tired all the time, you cannot give proper time to your studies at all, isn't it? So what you do in plan? Plan. See, everything starts with the plan. So we have one month almost, uh, four weeks. So what you need to do? You have to break down all your modules into these four weeks. Even you can personalize it to your preferences and difficulty level of each subject or each module. Plus, keep in mind that you should start with the module that is most difficult for you. Sometimes it can be challenging, okay? Sometimes your brain will always make excuses to keep it for the last, but don't let that overpower you. Start with the most demanding subject first, okay? And, and do try to make a, you know, the study plan. There are, you know, the plenty of study plan or planner available on Google. So you can just, you know, print one. You can make your own plan, you know, for, for one month and you can write down that, okay, from this hour to this hour, I'll do this, this hour to this hour, I will do this. For example, if you're working and if you have to, you know, manage your house as well, kids as well, this and that, okay, minus those hours. So do try to give, you know, the solid hours which you have, okay? So, you know, this will surely help you because you need to, um, you know, the, have a schedule, plan, planner is must always remember okay because if you will not plan so what you will do like i said earlier you will be stuck in one module for good 10 days and you are not going to give any any kind of importance to any other module there is all right so make a plan there are plenty of planners on google so once you will google that okay monthly planner so uh, multiple sites will open you can print anyone then you can write you can paste it in your room and, you know, on your study table, wherever you are studying. So this surely is going to help you. Then what? Schedule. Schedule is very much important. Okay. Like, for example, from tomorrow onwards, I have to do antenatal care from day one to day four. Then I have to do maternal medicine, you know, the module from, you know, the day five to day eight. Post-op care, nine to ten, because this is a small module. So I might give because I'm good in it. So I might give one day or two day. So it all depends on, you know, so always prioritize core surgical skills because it's a small module. So I will give two days or maybe one day if you are good in it. Oncology again, you know, you can go for 13 to 15 or say, you know, the two days. So it all depends on how you strategize, how you prioritize, how you think that, you know, you need to give time according to module. But this is going to be my humble advice that, you know, the modules which are important, 
although the whole <laughs> you know the curriculum is important but of course some of the modules which require time because they are huge in terms of stations in terms of you know the topics so give them little extra time and you know the topics or the modules which are short uh, for which we do have you know the limited stations so give one one two two days i think that is going to be enough and this particular strategy really worked for me in my all you know the exams so I hope it will work for you guys as well. If you find it useful, you can, you know, the, utilize it for yourself as well. Okay. But schedule is must. If you are not making any schedule, um, I don't think so. It is going to be, you know, the helpful for you because your time is important each and single day, hour, minute, and every, you know, everything is going to be important close to exam. Okay. So what are going to be the important tips? You have to revise important points. Number one, you have to do at least five to six stations practice daily. You need to revise guidelines and talk points. Okay, the talk important uh, topics. For example, we do have um, Crohn's disease structure discussion. We do have obstetric cholestasis structure discussion. We do have, uh, you know, the couple of other structure discussions as well. So remember, you know, the every guideline which has an algorithm Every talk article which has an algorithm or management, you know, the charts. So sometimes those talk articles, those guidelines can be touched in exam. Okay. So by far, everybody is so familiar with all these guidelines and talk articles. So, so I will advise all of you that make your own list. Okay. Give yourself time, one hour, two hours, and, you know, make a proper plan. Don't just do simulated patient task. This is a major mistake what candidates do. All the time, they just really love to do simulated patient task, okay? And I think, personally, I think this is a major mistake. Why? Because in the communication, sometimes we can fumble, we can jumble, we can miss, you know, important things. But can you just imagine that structure discussion carries, you know, the solid marks? If you are good in your concept, if you are good in your guideline talk article, so can you just imagine that you are going to carry, you know, 10 on 10 marks, okay? So don't always put, you know, the 100% focus on simulated patient tasks because I've been teaching for part three, I think, for quite long. So I know, you know, almost 90% of the candidates, they just want to do simulated patient tasks, which is not bad. But I always suggest that, you know, the both tasks carry equal importance. So why ignore structured discussion as well? Because when it comes to structured discussion, structure mean you cannot go from question number one to question number five, and then you cannot go back to question number three. Because in real exam, you are going to be, uh, you know, the hearing this again and again, that okay, from the examiner that you have five questions to answer, and you cannot go back to previous one if you have answered one question. All right. So that's why it is termed as structured. Structured means it is going to be purely structured. You cannot go from the A to Z and then in the middle and then, you know, come back again. It's not going to be like that. All right. So make sure that you are, you know, preparing for both type of stations. Then again, then again, yet again, in fact. Okay. Don't just rely and don't just focus on ready-made templates. Don't memorize them. What if role player asks you anything which was not written in that set template, what you will do in that scenario? Can you, can you, you know, the rephrase something or can you reproduce something? I think that is going to be challenging. Okay. So rehearse in a way that at least you are able to communicate. Whichever question patient is, you know, the asking, whichever patient, you know, wants to know. Okay. So don't memorize anything. Don't just focus on ready-made templates. Templates can be helpful because, you know, they can give you an idea that, okay, this is how it should be, but this should not be in exam again. So, so just imagine that, you know, you guys are like, I mean, 50 and you are going, uh, 50 students are in one center and almost every student is uttering same lines. So can you just imagine, you know, what kind of impact, you know, it is going to give on examiners. I'm an examiner, Dr. Hassan is an examiner, and sometimes we both laugh and sometimes, you know, we both discuss at so many things around, okay, that, you know, why candidates do this mistake and, you know, this really affects final score as well. 
So this is not going to be a success if you are memorizing 100 plus templates. Okay, this is not a success at all. Success is going to be how you perform in real exam, how you deal in real exam with patients or role players. Okay, how you behave or how you execute one particular station. All right, plus don't just attend so many sessions around and listen to just audios or videos. Because roughly if I can say that, you know, every audio or video session, they are going to be of three hours. So sometimes, you know, you may end up in losing your time. Okay, so that, that time can be utilized. But still, if you feel that it is, you are comfortable with it and uh, you are okay with it. So yes, you can do, but don't just, you know, attend all, you know, the sessions here and there. And don't just listen to audios or videos. Okay. So do try to rehearse and do try to speak. This exam is all about, you know, how you speak, how you <laughs> behave. So don't just always be quiet. So because, you know, if you are not going to kill your shyness here, if you are not going to kill your, uh, you know, the, you can say, I, I can say that, you know, the shortcomings here, you know, if you are afraid of, if you are shy, if you fumble a lot. So just, just, you know, talk. This exam is not, you know, the English language test. All you need to do is communication. So at least, you know, the do regular brainstorming with your study buddy. It is important. Okay. At least five to six stations, you know, the daily. In terms of if you are doing five to six stations, it means you are revising almost all points from those particular stations, isn't it? Uh, for example, if I have done, you know, the maternal medicine module today, maternal medicine disorder today, I have done, you know, the Crohn's disease. I have done renal transplant. I have done CKD. Yeah. I have done, uh, you know, the shakat Meritut's uh, disease. Okay. I have done, you know, the club foot or whatever, you know. See, I have done, you know, the plenty of. So what I'll be doing is wherever I will feel that I'm lacking in my knowledge, I will open my talk article. I will open the relevant source and I will immediately try to correct myself. This also takes time, isn't it? So if I have done five to, you know, the six station today, so it means I am putting stress on my neurons. So at the same time, I'm opening all my talk articles and everything. So yes, I'm revising. So at the end of the day, I am not, uh, uh, you know, the kind of uh, afraid of that. Okay, I cannot start, you know, in a good way very next day. So you should be confident. If you are doing five to six stations, A to Z, you are not leaving anything behind. You are doing, you know, the theory, you are doing patient information leaflet. At the same time, you are practicing with your study buddy. I think that is okay. That is, that is more than okay, in fact. Okay, so do this way. And this is important that you have to book at least one to two mocks to have a corrected version of preparation. Because if all the time I'm, I'm, you know, the practicing with myself or with my study buddy and nobody is there to correct me. So sometimes that preparation can also go into, uh, you know, the vein. All right. So make sure that, you know, if you can do it, you can book one or two mock, you know. So it is going to give you a good idea that how to go 14 stations in one go, because it's, it is going to be a kind of exam like practice. Plus, don't take any feedback on your head. <laughs> and don't demand for extra feedback as well from any teacher, any mentor around. Because I have seen somebody, you know, the sometimes, you know, they ask that, can you please tell me, have I passed this, this station or am, am I borderline or I have failed this station? And my answer always is that one station cannot determine your capacity to pass this exam. If you're not working, you know, the if you're not doing properly with me in my particular station, it doesn't mean that you are not going to perform in other 13 stations there is. All right. So don't demand such kind of, you know, the feedback as well. Altogether, I feel that this is a very foolish practice that, you know, um, I am going to tell you that, okay, uh, look, you know, ABC, you have failed this station. So how will you feel afterwards? Will you feel happy after my session? If I just tell you that, you know, you have failed this, st this station, you are not ready to go. And even though you have booked your exam, you have booked your plane tickets, hotels and everything. And now I'm giving you this feedback that you are not ready for this exam. And you have failed this station or, you know, the one, two, three, four, five stations or anything. So how do you feel? How, how will you feel at that time? Of course, demotivated. Yeah, isn't it? 
demotivated and even may be frustrated as well and maybe you know the very low on energy too that oh my god i'm not prepared it means you know i cannot go for this exam and and i cannot pass this exam either okay so i would suggest that be the best version of yourself in every station even though if you have performed that station earlier anywhere there, here and there xyz and if you are performing again in your revision you know the session or in your revision you know the practice or in your mock so do try to be the best version of yourself again don't do you know the same mistakes again do try to innovate do try to bring new sentences and in terms of new sentences i mean to say is that don't try to bring fancy fancy sentences in your um, you know the stations your language should be very understandable it has to be very easy it has to be jargon free if you are talking to role player okay so nobody is expecting that you are going to bring you know the fancy statements or fancy sentences and uh, you know the you are very good in your you know the grammatical uh, you know the presentation as well no 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 nobody is going to look at that okay so don't be ashamed of if if you think that you know you are not so much fluent don't be afraid of speaking as well because english is not our first language even if you fumble even if you cannot you know the bring so many fancy sentences doesn't matter okay as long as you are communicating well as long as you are doing your all all domains in the respective uh, you know the um, you know the module so yes you are good to go okay so don't feel shy don't be upset don't be uh, you know the kind of afraid and uh, don't be uh, sometimes you know the because i do deal with so many students around so sometimes you know the students say that i'm so shy i feel ashamed on my english and i really don't want to communicate uh, no it should not be like this okay so in the last month you know all the time you have to tell it to yourself that i can do it because so many people around have done it so i can also do it all right and self care very important isn't it so eat healthy and regular meals avoid fatty and spicy meals because of course it it can put you know the toll on your health okay sleep well for at least 5 to 6 hours in a row straight 5 to 6 hours regular walk or meditate if you can okay or watch tv listen music but avoid thrillers because if we do watch you know the thrillers or series we can get lost and we can you know the utilize our neurons at that place okay so sleep well but not like this on your books <laughs> you should be lying in your bed you should be lying on your back and you know you should be taking you know a good nap good sleep and uh, what i used to do was when i was a student and uh, you know the every one hour or two hour i used to take a short walk you know in my house or because i am you know the tea coffee lover so i used to take you know the the small cup of tea or anything so it really you know used to boost my you know the energy and of course you know my neurons used to be uh, happy as well so so self care is important okay don't forget yourself okay don't forget yourself at all in fact now you know the mocks mocks are very necessary because you know sometimes um, we are working hard and maybe you know the we are practicing so well but maybe we are not in good direction so you can you can you know the book one to two mocks according to your own you know the feasibility to enhance your presentation skills and for you know the other tips and tricks as well from from you know the respected mentor so i think this is going to uh, you know the enhance your skills so here i want to tell you guys is that you know we are coming islamabad we are coming to islamabad okay for our face to face uh, you know the mocks all right it is going to be a two days event in islamabad and uh, we have got you know the limited seats left and this is going to be a very uh, you know the uh, good experience for everyone there is and of course you know me uh, dr zeb uh, you know is is there to book you know the one to one mock so i do have limited slots available as well so if anybody wants to book with me so you guys can you know the contact with my team okay and any time uh, i'm also available easily approachable anywhere anywhere or if you feel if you are feeling any kind of difficulty anywhere so you guys can talk to me as well okay doesn't matter mock or no mock on the other hand we are running uh, you know the very uh, you know the crash preparation kind of uh, you know the course me and dr laila we both are conducting that and so far you know the, we have very uh, good you know the candidates and you know they are working very hard and they are enjoying our sessions as well 
So this is going to be a very, you know, the crash revision, rapid revision kind of thing. We are doing all important exam like questions. So if, in, if anybody who is interested can also, you know, the join us. So I'm sure this is going to be a very, uh, you know, the fruitful learning for you guys as well. Okay. So anyone, you know, who, who is interested can contact me or my team. You know, Aisha is there, Muhira is there, Yavar is there, or any med exam, you know, the expert personnel. So you guys can reach out to us, me, Lela, anyone from med exam. Okay. So here I want to stop for a minute and I want to introduce to all of you um, my very dear used to be, you know, the student. And now I'm very happy to introduce him, Dr. Rana Mundal. And he is joining us as a part three mentor. Hi, Rana. Are you there? Uh, yes. Hi, everyone. I'm here. Okay, that's great. And that's it's nice to be here. Yeah. <laughs> same here. Same here. It's been long. <laughs> so we are in sessions again. Yeah. One year, yeah. isn't it? Last November and this November. So yes, Dr. guys, uh, Rana was with us and, uh, you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, he has passed his exam and later on he has passed another specialty exam as well. FSRH and now he has joined us as a mentor so I would like to you know the give this opportunity to Rana to show or to you know the say any few words and yeah. anything from his experience you know you guys can be benefited for this uh, you know the exam so we will be happy over to you Rana yeah thank you so everyone you I guess you all of you have already have passed part two and now preparing for part three is that correct? And if so, you guys have already gained the knowledge. But as it was, as ma'am was told, telling every one of you what to do, how to prepare yourself. So if you guys are having around 30 days around left, so try to be focused on the areas where you are. What I did personally in my experience, I am sharing with you. Uh, I had around give for preparation around three to four months uh, it's enough time and it's have to i did scheduling pattern where i make the scheduled around give each uh, my around one week for every module wise so first of all i gather the each module and what are the particular stations that has come or that can come as you already know and also need to con uh, need to know the patient information leaflets as well, according to the modules. So I used to practice with that. And it partly doesn't take that much time actually for as long as you already know everything in the part two. Just you need to develop your communication and see the patient in a holistic way. That's the main thing. When you're reading the station, you need to think of what I need to do this patient. What information should I need to take from them? What helps I need to gather from other specialties for this patient? What are the safety things I need to do? If you can see these points, I think most of you will pass this exam. Mm. And if you know, because already uh, treatment part, you all of know it. And you just not to mention every treatment point, you have to be specific with the patient you are given. Okay, so basically, because uh, if you think whenever you are reading these things and try to have this idea in your uh, mind, whenever you are in the station, before entering the station, so you see, I think you, most of you will have an idea and you can structure yourself before entering the station. That is the best time. Even if you can do it, it's okay. Be within the two minutes, you can take another one minute also inside the station itself. You can ask the role player or the invigilator over there, and you can start after one minute as well if you think you're not ready. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so I what I and P, uh, one other thing I want to tell you guys is that don't only read this uh, information given. Uh, also read the last four lines that is the, what you are need to do that's another thing important thing always they are always they don't write the same things sometimes they may change sometimes mm -hmm. okay so you may get you sometimes you may need to 
see uh, i'm in the same minute to forget something because it's always sometimes it's very important to read the what they have asked you to perform what they asked you to do sometimes they not always ask you to tell the whole everything you may need to uh, sometimes one time there was an option given a uh, plot one student uh, one of my friend didn't uh, read that to uh, to read that and she, she told everything about mm -hmm. the contraception every option so don't do that it's just to give you an example and if you have prepared yourself and know if no as you guys already know so everything about the knowledge so just to know about the how to communicate with the patient and to make informed decision of these choices you are giving as a treatment and respect the decision and acknowledge the patient's decision that's the last part i want to, to highlight mm. and for personal experience i as i told you i have given 3 or 4 months to clear and it was uh, good enough uh, as a most of the examiner they are also friendly sometimes role players are also friendly if if you even forget sometimes role players do help remember one thing in the exam examiner role player they are all are there to help you to pass the exam nobody wants you to fail the exam Exactly. everyone is friendly but you need to bring it out from the role player that's a key point role player is always try to give you the information but you need to give some hints or something so that she is able to tell you everything and another thing is that the in the exam whenever we are examining the when you and your role player will be talking the examiner will be seeing some certain key points only because uh, in the real exam what happens is we are given a chart as an examiner in each uh, each module it means each heading like in information gathering communication with patients and colleagues and patient safety we have to tick the each thing and around for each heading there is around five and there are five to four points we are the mainly concerned seeing if you guys can cover all these things you are definitely going to pass hmm. so exactly. try to be concise regarding that and this is best when you can do this is the best time to do when you are reading the station be structured be structure it in the beginning itself so when you are entering the station that won't be a very big problem if you are ready i can have an example with you guys also yes so i think rana has given a very beautiful insight uh, regarding this exam so always remember that you know sometimes if you don't know anything about any station so sometimes role player do helps you as well so do try to you know take those cues in it is very important okay so if you are just going to be in your own aura that you know you will be lost that oh i don't know about this you know the particular station so how i'm going to do it this way or that way you have to finish your 10 minutes isn't it so those 10 minutes are yours so all you need to do is that you have to talk to the patient you can simply ask that how may i help you uh, can i know that you know what brought you here today you know like like in a very uh, close question so not like i mean very open question if you have to dig out you know the information so this way you know you can ask you can extract so much of information and you can use th that information as well and this happens this happens quite often in exam so never expect that, you know, the 14 stations are going to be very known to you and, uh, you know, that you are going to be in very good position and you will be dancing while you will see the, you know, the stations. So sometimes some stations can be unexpected. Sometimes, you know, that you may feel that, you know, I have done this station somewhere here and there, but maybe this time, uh, you know, the agenda is different. Maybe this time role player has different questions. Maybe the task is a little bit different. Maybe the key, key um, which RCOG sets for every exam is is pretty different from previous one okay so never think of that you know the rcog is repeating same questions again and again okay maybe they change the marking scheme maybe they change the agenda maybe they change you know the particular uh you know the kind of you can say the module itself in that that which exactly they want to test in that station okay so don't always think of that you know the questions are going to be repeated 
because by the time we are entering into exam by the time we have rehearsed a lot by the time you know we are entering into exam we know so many things so when you know any question comes in front of us so we always think that okay this is a repeat question this is a repeat question but maybe that is not a repeat question this is strategy might work in theory but it will not work in the oski at all okay so please be extremely careful and prepare in a way that you are preparing for one module, not for one particular station. Make sure that you are preparing yourself for, uh, you know, the whole uh, exam curriculum rather than only you are focusing on recall questions and this and that. Okay, so make sure that you are revising, make sure that you are practicing. Practice, practice is must for part three. If you're not speaking, if you're not, you know, being corrected, if you're not on time, uh, because sometimes what happens is maybe we are very good in our own capacity where we are working at, okay, our communication is very good, but we are taking a lot of time, okay, but in this exam, or maybe in almost all postgraduate exam, be it Irish exam, be it, you know, this um, NHS, be it European board or anyone, time management is equally important. So always set a timer with you when you are practicing with your study buddy or anyone. So if you are working, you know, the this way, uh, if you are working, um, you know, this way, I think you can have a good idea about real exam as well. I remember when I was practicing, when I was preparing, so even few days before exam, my last station was up to 11 minutes and few seconds. And I was so stressed that I was unable to perform, you know, the one station in 10 minutes time. But you won't believe in exam hall, when I was in exam, uh, so far, you know, I have finished almost all stations on time. And even structure discussions were finished in almost seven minutes, eight minutes. And for the rest two minutes, those rest two minutes were the longest two minutes of my life. And you will feel that. You will feel that when you are going to be in exam. So don't be afraid of, if you have finished your structure discussion early, and if you feel that you still have got time, so you, so you just need to calm down. You just need to sit, you know, calmly. Don't look here and there. Don't do, you know, the, any stupid thing in that cubicle. Don't look at examiner. You know, don't try to talk to him. And don't try to be friendly with anyone there is. Okay? So so stay calm, you know, sit, sit calmly. Don't, you know, the exchange glances here and there and blah, blah, blah. Okay? Sit calmly and wait for the bell. You know, if bell will surely ring in 10 minutes time, then move to the next station. And even if you are finishing your station on time and even you think that you haven't closed the loop for the station. And uh, of course, this is a very normal practice that we will feel low that, um, you know, I haven't done, I haven't given patient patient information leaflet. I didn't ask that what are her concerns? Is she happy with the consultation or no? Is she going to come back again or no? I didn't ask her. Okay, so doesn't matter if you have done your station in the respective task or the respective domains, you are good to go. Okay, so don't don't, you know, the get anything on your head in exam. So just move from one cubicle to the other cubicle. All right. Yeah, most, so, most of yes. the time the stations does not require. I mm. recall the my exam. Because most of the station I have finished around eight minutes. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. But at the end, and if you're as doing structured discussion, sometimes it may finish even if in six minutes or six also. minutes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, when I get result, you will be see that that won't be impacting your scoring at all. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Hundred percent agree with you. Hundred percent. Okay, so Dr. Anna is going to present a station. Is there any volunteer? Hmm? A potential TOG article that can come in exam from the last one to two years? Yes, why not? Transgender TOG, okay. Parenthood of Turner syndrome, uh, acute coronary syndrome, cardiomyopathy, okay. It can, yes, cardiomyopathy has been touched last, in last exam, okay. Postpartum cardiomyopathy, it was the station in May exam. So all these important talks are there, you know, remember, you know, the talks which are touching, you know, the real life patients, those talks are very important. Not like, you know, the hysteroscopy, media in hysteroscopy, you know, the what is the ideal position in laparoscopy and blah, 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 not, not those, but yes, cardiomyopathy, palpitations and arrhythmia, acute coronary syndrome, uh, hypernatremia, because it's a very rare topic, 
it might not come but since it is it is uh, you know associated with maternal medicine so yeah it can come however uh, parenthood of turner syndrome very important and if we talk about all these syndromes so yeah mrkhs ais turner syndrome these are very much important so patients can come to you that you know what are the options for me that how can i get pregnant so this and that you know you have to bring your knowledge into uh, you know the account and then yes in terms of because couple of important maternal medicine tog article are there okay thyroid disorder asthma all right cardiomyopathy cardiac disorders then phenylketonuria very important tog article okay so just scan them and just just try to have a good idea about that you know how you are going to revise your tog articles okay but remember uh, tog articles are basically uh, you know the is going to be based on real life patients okay so if you feel that you know there are certain you know the real life patients which can come in you know the our clinic or our hospital so yeah that can be touched okay great uh, so med exam please make dr rana presenter so he can share his screen and we can do one station and later i will do one station so we need two volunteers okay actually so anybody anybody who wants to present without hesitation without being you know the shy or anything uh, shying won't help actually because <laughs> this is the time when you get to prepare exactly. yourself this is the opportunity you should take exactly. rather than giving it away exactly exactly because at then the end of the day you have to do it exactly exactly so who is there who wants to present anyone hmm Yes. Oh yeah, sure, Lela. Why not? Yes, Shri Ramya. How are you? Hmm? Yes, yes, yes. So Lela and and Ramya, no problem. Okay. So Lela, hi, hi, sweetheart. How are you? Okay. So med exam, please uh, make Dr. Anna presenter. Hello, who is there? Med exam team, are you there? Anyone? Please make Dr. Anna presenter. I don't know where are they. Uh, so it's. Uh, I think you can uh, go ahead. I'll do the next one. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, no problem. Okay. Meanwhile, they will come and they will make you. So it's better that you show your slides as well. Okay. Now you are presenter, Rana. You are there. Okay. Okay. Good okay. to go. Okay. Yes. Please share your screen. Is it visible? Yes, it is. So, okay, so who is doing the station? Lela or Ramya? Either of them. Okay. So, what I need to do? Yes, no, I can. Uh, do you guys, yeah, anyone is to. But can before, uh, yes, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, before you begin the reading of two minutes, what I want to do when you are going to read the scenario of the station, can we just focus on this point? I want your brain to process these few things. Okay, first, what is the patient and who is the patient? And first of all, you know, because please address the age also. Sometimes uh, many of the colleagues do forget to mention the age of the patient also. Don't do that. Be aware of the confirm of the patient uh, confirm the patient and her age. 
or his age, okay? And try to give a good first impression so that the patient will feel free to talk with you. And when you have read the scenario, you will try to highlight what are the extra information I need to know or the information I need to gather from this patient based on the what are the agenda has been given in the last four points. That is what is the task they have asked you to perform. Okay, be aware to gather information systematically and in the in, in the correct way. That is the that will lead to your diagnosis, lead to your treatment plan. This is the key because uh, always you don't need to get the, all the information, all the family history, relative history, everything you don't need always in every station. Okay. But in few station, you need to give a specific histories. Okay. They don't want every time you need to know everything because sometimes it will kill you from the doing the main task, the agenda they have set to uh, give you new. Okay. And be aware that if you are anything missing or not after gathering, the best way, if you are not sure what you have missed anything or not, ask the patient or the role player directly. Is there anything else you want to like, tell me? Is there anything else I am missing here? Okay. You can ask that question and that sometimes do help. If the patient was hiding or concealing something from you, it can be revealed. Okay. And according to the task you have given, please consider what help you require. Do you require the help of an anything else? If it is a case of early pregnancy, you may need to consider a early pregnancy clinic. If, you, if the patient has something, if the genetic informations are required, think of the genetist. If the other surgical for urogynecology problem or any surgical problem, other specialties are required to deal with these things. Think of that and the best time to do this when you're outside the, your station cubicle. You will know the what helps are required and please make just single line, make, the, make them speak as, about the what specialties she need to follow up with. And make an informed decision. What is this informed decision means? Ella, can you tell me what is this informed decision means? Hello. Can you repeat, sir? Mama. Can you tell me what is this informed decision means? Informed decision is like uh, we inform the patient each and everything about the uh, procedure that is just we are going to do a treatment we are going to give her, and after that, this uh, patient make the decision accordingly because uh, we just yes. need to have uh, all. Yes, exactly. But you need to just help him, the patient, to choose the decision and respect. And whenever the patient chooses or something or likes his treatment, acknowledge it. Acknowledge the benefits first, and then you can repeat the adverse effects or the that's the disadvantage of this treatment. Okay. So don't just, okay, you're good to go with this treatment. Don't do that. Okay. That is the making an informed decision. This, this way you can validate her thoughts also. And at the end of the time, you can do the summarization in the two way. First of all, when you have better to do, when you have gathered the, all the information, okay, then the summarize and validate it once. That will really help the students and also it will help the examiner to see that, the, that you are making sure that the role player is getting it, everything, okay. So with this, the next uh, stations where um, whatever, whenever you are getting any stations, please try to follow up and build, make your brain to process these things. If you consider these things in each, each and every session when you're starting, you will get and have an idea what to do in the, when you have entered in the cubicle, as simple as that. Okay, because I used to summarize in this way in every station because it really helps to not to miss anything. Okay, and if any of you miss, it will, when the role player, it will help you to gather the information as well. Okay, so are you ready? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
application. Your time starts now. Let me know when to change the slide, okay? Uh, next slide, sir. Any other slides, sir? Uh, no, this two just. Are you done? Uh, just a minute. Okay, let me know. Can I start? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Hello, I am Dr. Lela, one of the doctor in the gynae clinic. Can I confirm your name and age? Oh, yes, doctor. My name is Gail Swanson and I am 18 years old. Okay. How can I address you? Uh, you can call me Gail. That's fine. Okay, okay, Gail, I just gathered information from your GP letter that you are having some concerns uh, regarding your uh, peers and you are here to discuss that. Am I right? Uh, yes, doctor. Um, I'm actually already an 18 years old. All of my friends mm -hmm. have already have been uh, periods for, and I didn't have it till now. What to do, doctor? I'm really concerned. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm uh, really uh, sorry to hear that that you are suffering a lot. So, Gail, can you can I ask you a few more questions so that I can make a mutually agreed plan of management for you? Sure, doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, uh, Gail. Gail, so as you told me that uh, you are 18 years and you are not able to have beards yet. So, and your uh, uh, do you have any complaint of tummy pain during some uh, specific days or any discharge from down below? Or no, doctor, I don't have pains in my tummy. I am okay. discharged, no discharge. Okay. And uh, uh, some personal questions, Gail. Uh, do you have uh, hair growth on your underarms or like, bikini area? Yeah, there is a few, a few hair growth is there. Okay. I think mm -hmm. that's uh, normal to me. Okay, okay. And uh, uh, your breasts are uh, developing or not, uh, Gail? Yeah, I, I think I have well developed breast. Uh, since I, when, I, when I was 10 years old, since then I have uh, breast development is quite good. Yeah, I okay. think perfectly normal breast I have. Okay. Okay. Uh, my few questions will be intrusive, Gail. Uh, can you please tell me that are you sexually active? Oh, yes, doctor, I am. I have do have a boyfriend from the same university I am in. And it's for, mm -hmm. I, we have been together for around one year still now. Mm -hmm. So any uh, problem during your sexual intercourse? Uh, no, it, uh, he, uh, we can have sex uh, and he does use his condom. Uh, but sometimes mm -hmm. it causes pain also, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can understand that. And... Um, as you told me that uh, you have a sister that has appeared a long time ago. 
So, and your, uh, do you know that your mother has beards at the what age? Uh, I don't know exactly when you had one age, but uh, she had regular periods. Okay, and any other your sister that is uh, after, uh, other than your one sister? Uh, no, uh, none of, uh, I only have one sister, but uh, I once I heard from my mom that one of my aunt has a, mm -hmm. no, never had period. And uh, she mm -hmm. also, she is married. She has been never been pregnant also. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will look into that. And uh, uh, so, Gail, uh, any other medical condition for which you visit your GP regularly? Mm, no, doctor. Any history of surgery on a tummy or down blow? No, I, no, no, not at all. And uh, your uh, weight to height ratio, are you aware of that? Uh, I think uh, 23. Okay, and any allergy to any medication? Uh, no, doctor. And uh, you, uh, any family history of concerns, any specific, any cancer, any clots in the legs or like that? Uh, I am not aware of anything like that. Okay, and uh, uh, Gail, uh, you smoke? Oh, no, doctor, I don't smoke, but I drink occasionally with my friends. Okay. okay. But I am and really I concerned the... about this, doctor. Uh, why am I not even having period till now? I can understand your concerns, Gail. Surely in the next few minutes, I will discuss with you. I have your all the reports with me and uh, I will discuss all the things. Okay, so what are the reports uh, saying? Okay, uh, let me explain it to you, uh, Gail. If you allow me, just uh, I want to examine you in the presence of chaperone. Is that fine? Uh, yes, uh, doctor. That's uh, fine. Okay, okay. Thank you for your concern. So, Gail, I have confirmed your name and NHS number on the reports and uh, these reports belong to, do, to you. Gail, I have some concerning news to discuss with you. Uh, should I proceed? Please, doctor. Okay, I... Okay, Gail, thank you for your cooperation. Gail, uh, let me first tell you that, uh, let me draw for you that uh, normally a woman have uh, a womb and then uh, the, that is uh, the organ. And uh, also there are some, there, there are two tubes on the sides as well as ovaries. And the, some hormones are produced from the ovaries that, that, that act on the womb and they causes uh, the menstru menstruation or periods. Are you getting me, Gail? Yeah, I think I know all these things. Okay, and and do you know about what are the chromosomes? Oh uh, no, what are the chromosomes? Okay, I I will tell you. Actually, our body is made up of billions of cells that contain some uh, uh, structure uh, uh, structure. Uh, you can say genetic structure in them and we call these as chromosomes normally a female they get uh, one uh, chromosome from the genetic sex chromosome from the father and one from the mother and normally female have xx chromosome so that causes the development of the female genitalia and female organs and all the um, breast and womb and all this process are you getting me uh, uh, Gail? Uh, yeah, yeah i think it making sense to me Okay, okay. And uh, sometimes there are rare cases in which uh, there is a faulty gene that comes uh, in, and instead of uh, second X chromosome, there is an Y chromosome in the female. And uh, with this called condition, we called androgen insensitivity syndrome. And the females have 46 XY chromosome. And I am really sorry to say to you, Gail, that your reports are showing that uh, you are having this condition. Oh, what does this condition mean? Uh, I can see, again, it is a difficult news for you. And uh, I just want to tell you that uh, in uh, this condition, the uh, female organs are never formed, like uh, the womb and the ovaries, they are not uh, formed. And uh, sometimes uh, the female don't have beards and they are not uh, having a normal uh, sexual life as well. So, are you getting me, uh, Gail? But I can have sex uh, regularly. Yeah, I, I think, can. but I just don't have periods. Mm -hmm. I can understand that, Gail. Uh, sometimes there is a, a vaginal uh, elongation in some patients uh, so that there is a, uh, they can have a penetrative sex, but uh, up to some extent, there is some blockage can be there. So, if you allow me, I just want to discuss with you the... Um, 
management so can i have periods or not uh gail i just want to tell you that uh, uh, it will never be uh, possible for you to have periods just because oh, uh, you are not uh, able to have a womb okay oh my god okay, uh, okay. Uh, can i know about your concerns gail that why are you yeah. so much concerned yeah please please Hello? because i i cannot have period that means uh, can i have uh, pregnant mm -hmm. can i be in future can i preg get pregnant or not uh gail i am i understand that you, this is a difficult time for you but there are the options available for pregnancy in which uh, uh, we can just uh, have uh, 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 your partner's sperm as well as uh, the uh egg from the donor they can just meet up and uh, uh we can just have uh, a pharma baby outside and this it can be implanted so that into a surrogate mother or if you have uh, some infantile uh, uterus so that the, you can just have a pregnancy in that way but uh, there are chances that and other options is adoption as well but doctor i just wanted to can you do anything to make me have period um yeah i am sorry to uh, say that but uh, sometimes uh, uh, we can give you some medicine because uh, that is called hormone replacement therapy that can be started on you just because before if you don't have um, hormones produced in the body so that it can lead to early uh, aging as well as some heart heart problems and this uh, kind of problem so that we can just give you some hormones that can just uh, be given in the cyclic way or uh, continuous way so that in this case uh, if the womb is present so that we can just have uh, periods but uh, you can uh, we are not sure about that for that i just want to tell you that you will be seen by the team of doctors that will include my senior consultant as well as a specialist doctor sex counselor as well your time so is up but still you. continue your time is up but still continue so okay. i just want to tell you that um, you will be uh, seen by the team of doctors that can uh, make a plan for you i will refer you to my senior consultant as well as the genetic doctors that are specialist in this and they can just uh, discuss with you these plan for the management are you getting me gail yeah i think it's uh, making sense but uh, it's kind of i am feeling very low at present because uh, you already told me that i may not have periods and i may not bear children in future as well is there any other long term health issues i'll be suffering from doctor uh there are some concerns gail in which uh, we will just uh, look do some ultrasound scan on you in which we say the uh, some uh, presence of gonads because uh, in this case uh, the gonads cannot be present at the normal ovaries are not present and gonads are present sometimes in your um, groin area so for that we just have to do that remove that after discussing with the surgeon because if uh, these are not removed they can ca cause some long term uh, effects on you sometimes they can cause some cancer as well so for that i will just uh, refer you to a multidisciplinary team that will uh, look into that matter are you getting me gail mm. and we also uh, give you some hormone replacement therapy as well that can be given to make uh, the you to make some hormones uh, in your body so that you can be prevented from some bone problems heart problems and uh, early aging as well okay anything Is there else anything you want i can uh, just okay yeah i i will just uh, refer you to some support groups that are just and also give you this patient information leaflet as well as uh, uh, refer you to counselor as well because you are uh, uh, passing through a difficult time and you can just talk to them and uh, they can just help you in uh, coping with that okay doctor okay thank you for your time um so what do you think first of all
Uh, I messed up. I think I was not able to understand these uh, baselines. Either these are normal or not, because uh, LHFSH is not normal, and others I was not sure that whether these are the normal. Why you are not sure? Normal. Why you are not sure? Just tell me why you are not sure. I <laughs> haven't seen actually. Actually, I was just. Uh, Thinking about that, uh, you this, already uh, have part. You already have cleared part two, right? So you, <laughs> and why? Why you are not and we are just, Yeah, and we are just have a habit of having the, like uh, you know, uh, there's a reference level as well because we uh, just know that they gave the reference levels alongside. So I was just not uh, like prepared that <laughs> it can come like this. Mm -hmm. Hmm. TSH is already only, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If T4 yeah. is kind of, uh, it's normal, although, but if T4 hmm. can be, you yeah, have yeah. Problem, I was but still, other I was things are, sure about other things are the similar things. Yeah. Yeah. Other, yeah. But yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah, karyotyping, I was quite sure that it is like uh, androgen sensitivity, but uh, actually there is a case of uh, like swear syndrome as well, in which the patient has uterus and she is also having the same karyotyping. So I was just like uh, confused about that because I haven't seen that case. I just have a, just known the name of that. So I was just a little confused because of that um, yeah, SHBG and... Uh, well, that's only that level that I was not sure. Otherwise, I was just, I know that uh, FSH LH has raised so that mm -hmm. uh, like and testosterone is normal. And mm -hmm. I think the only thing that is SHBG, I was not sure about that. So that's why I just messed it up. nothing to do here, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I was continuously thinking about SHBG, yes. that what is it to do? <laughs> okay, apart, I from was, that, apart from apart that. Apart from that, I don't know. I think... Uh, uh, history was fine mm -hmm. and uh, information gathering, uh, sorry, cl applied clinical knowledge mm -hmm. and patient safety, mm -hmm. I never did well. Mm -hmm. And uh, communication, I don't know. <laughs> so let's yeah, see if Dr. Rana so, has in his bucket and then I will give okay. my feedback. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to know, have, what you what considered this point, have you considered? From which specialties uh, so do you require you the... Just a minute. Can you please repeat? Actually, I'm so having some internet problem. In this point, have Hello? you considered Hello? what helps do you require? What supports Just a patient may require before entering uh, can, the cubicle? Uh, can you please speak again? I'm just having connecting yeah, to mobile. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. Before entering the cubicle, have you thought what helps from the other specialties or where the patient need any support group or anything? Have you thought before entering in the cubicle? Because I told you, because uh, whenever you are entering in the cubicle, you need to think all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think about that. <laughs> you think about that, okay, fine. Yeah. Then it's so fine, okay. Mm. Because uh, you need to produce it also. Okay, that's right. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's see what are the, because uh, what will happen in the exam is that you will be, the, you will be talking with the role player, right? And the real examiner will be someone who is sitting beside the role player, seeing, observing mm. both of you otherwise. Okay. And we do have a checklist. That is the RCOG directly gives to them. Okay. And they will tick it. Okay. What things you have been covered or not? If you have covered everything, they will be giving you a good score. If you are not, because it is a, they don't, we examiners don't make decision by our own. This candidate is not good or not. It doesn't happen like that. Okay. Are you getting that point? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So we role players also given some things like this. Like you have been covered, you didn't cover the, what is the long-term effects of patient. That's why I asked. As a good role player, we always try to help you. Okay. As a good examiner, also try, try to always try to help you to pass the exam. Okay. Whenever you are missing something, examiners and role players does help you. Okay. So this is the chart we are giving. Okay. So now let me let I will show you also what are the points to cover and what you have been covered and what you have missed, okay, in the examiner sheet, okay? So like yeah. in information gathering, 
you have asked for sexual history dyspnea and also okay that i have been given you have also mm -hmm. asked for the kind of the um, physical examination okay that also done and you haven't discussed the what are the imaging results we need to perform that even if not required if you think it is required to do some imaging you need to yeah. tell the patient okay mm -hmm. so don't hesitate regarding that you have asked the family history you asked mm -hmm. about the you have acknowledged the anxieties okay and also acknowledged the future concerns also that's a good thing you mm -hmm. haven't just only one point is missing from here okay it's a very My good can okay. finding yeah yeah mm -hmm. now the part is the communication with the patients what do you think about the communication you have patient what you have told you, you just need to simply say the what is the abnormal finding okay you may not need to see the normal findings like don't think of as what is the just take the abnormal point and bring it out to the patient and what implication that will have to the patient's self that's only required okay and before uh, disclosing something like androgen sensitivity syndrome uh, you may need to give the patient some time and it's better to ask the patient about do you know about this condition or not okay you can uh, give a stop signal patient and give a pause also before disclosing something like this as well and always try to know that the what patient already knows about it okay that's a very important thing and here i think you your communication was little bit lacking when you have disclosed the like the way you have disclosing okay so long term effect I, so I I just wanted to know. Do you think this patients you talked about the hormone replacement therapy? Do you want to give the hormone replacement therapy directly so that she will have menstruation? Oh no, have, no, no! That yeah, is not yeah, the case. Yeah, yeah, because she won't be having endometrium. This kind of patient don't have mm -hmm. endometrium at all. So we'll never have a. Uh, okay, so I just have them. to tell her that we will do the scan and see whether, like, or not. Yeah, even if you're not uh, scanning, because how, uh, it is very unlikely to be a swear syndrome. First of all, it is very rare, and the swear syndromes do present in a uh, sometimes in a male pattern, and also the you have asked for the hair growth also. Like swear syndromes usually yeah. don't have it. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. And what about the <laughs> communication with the other colleagues? You have to have to utter these specialities. This is the things. If you don't give, we won't put ticks on it. Okay. Any sexual or gender dysphoric patient has to have an MDT meeting. Okay. Your examiner won't put tick if you are not uttering these things. And this is where sometimes role player can't even help you with it. Okay, okay. okay. So be careful if, because partial examiners is all only about uttering the exact key things only. You have to cover certain things only. That's the utmost important. Okay. Right. Certain things if you covered, we examiners have to give us you. Because you have only uttered these terms, I have to give you full on full in communication. If you cover all these things in the your near communication with the patient, I have to take it and have to give you full marks. There's no way I can deny your marks. Okay. Okay. So it doesn't require a huge knowledge to come cover all this. Okay. Um, and about the patient safety point, okay, you have covered the identity, you have ascertained the allergic or not. Why do you have explained why the conatsis need to be removed clearly? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just told that because uh, these are not present at the actual site. So when if we never uh, remove them, they can uh, just uh, have some effects on the long term effects that can just uh, can uh, uh, change into the cancer, and it can uh, like uh, has some deleterious effects for your health. 
Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, little bit of explanation like that you can say you are already because these gonads are the only source in your body that is producing the hormones. And mm-hmm. you are also 18 years old and your breast and the other secondary sexual organs has been developed. Okay. So, mm-hmm. and there is a one in four chances of this turns into be a cancer. Okay. We, okay. After, okay. So, that's better need to be removed and we'll be providing your life, hormonal therapy for the rest of the, your life from the outsource. That's the only, this only takes uh, less than even one minute to say it and you're giving the full marks. Mm, okay. Okay. See here in the because if this two are the same because you have covered this you don't here we will get tick also and here we will get tick also discuss the treatment option in our tummy you have uh, I think you have discussed the genetic basis but uh, the kind of not uh, polished way right? because I think it can be a very simply you can say that I will come to that okay and have you offered the screening no. No, the, the, I just missed the, that. Yeah, two things you have to consider because I already told you whenever in uh, entering in the station, you need to think of the what are the help I require from the other treatment or what are the help required I need, what are the other specialties I need to involve with. So if you think of the you are need to involve with geneticist, you will need to have a family screening. Okay, so all I have been linked with because some when you are okay. when we are the examining, we are not taking something like when we come to patient, we will be directly going to take these things and directly take these things as well. Mm-hmm. And if you are okay. seeing that it doesn't require much time at all. All right, all right. Mm. Okay. Mm. And in information gathering, please uh, do, do try to rule out any other common causes like in uh, prolactinoma, any visual disturbance, any headache, yeah, yeah. or not. Okay. And okay, I but, already... uh, if the diagnosis was given, so then we have to just uh, do that as well. Yeah, it's, yeah. It sometimes we have to uh, because the diagnosis had already been given, but you need to ask it and also okay, try to okay, confirm okay. if there is no association is there also. All right. Okay. 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 Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, yeah, another thing is that the when you have asked about sexual history, although I told directly told about uh, that the uh, her partner is using condom, but if if you if I didn't say, please try to give her the advice on the safe sexual advice also. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I just uh, that was in my mind, but then you said that you're using mm-hmm. condom, so just let's keep that. Okay. Mm. So now, what do you think? Is it was it very difficult <laughs> station or a simple no, station? No, it was, it was a simple station, but I made it difficult for me. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing I want because stations are simple and you can do survey. And you need to cover all those things, only these points only to pass the mm-hmm. exam and give a good result. Mm-hmm. Okay. You just okay. not need to do many things. Don't think of many things. And whenever you enter, just stru- give a structural format to this. What are the things I need to gain from this patient and what are the things I need to give to the patient? And what are mm. the health I require from patients? If we cover only these things structurally now, you will be covering almost the communication part and applied clinical knowledge as well. Okay. 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 Uh, sorry, there was a question of yours that uh, whether I will having I will be having a beards or not. So, uh, what can we just say? We are just not able to say straight no. So, like, what can be the no, answer for that? You have to say no, to answer. but you have to bring appropriate sentence. I yeah, am afraid that is, to I, say I, that. I will give my detailed feedback because I have noted down so many things, Lala. So perhaps that is going to be a little bit, you know, the bad for you. But <laughs> like uh, okay. Rana said that it is a very easy station. I'm ready to hear, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Because, you know, this station is very tricky. Okay. Uh, if mm. you are not breaking the bad news in a proper way, uh, even though you are fulfilling all these things, maybe your communication is not going to be good. 
what i have mm-hmm. noticed i will tell you after rana finishes his you know the feedback so i will give my feedback okay yes rana please carry on mm-hmm. okay and ma'am have you given the information about the gender uh, have a psychologist or have a, it has an impact on the patient's mental health okay mm-hmm. and have you talked about the support group this is a very important for the patient but particularly and in nhs there is also a register to maintain which has not been if you can can cover it that's fine but there is a registration system is also so that the whenever patient goes in a this way they have to put in register uh, system as well like this i will be showing you this is a national anomaly and registration service that has to be patient in a put on okay so okay. you have i have given you i think enough feedback but the point is that what you need to do have you understand it let's see it from mm. your point what you have thinking now um, because giving feedback is very easy but if unless mm. you are processing it in own help be helpful uh i think it's for the rest of you okay speak simple actually i have to like think take the thing simple actually i was thinking so much because two three things was just running in my mind and i was just uh, just trying to just f- finish each and everything and i was not able to do so i think i have to just take the thing simple not think much and just uh, like try to listen to the role player that what he is saying and uh, just try to do the things accordingly hmm. And because I was thing just have missed at this point. I wanted to highlight. Okay, the last yeah, yeah, point. It, it mm-hmm. is very important when mm-hmm. you are communicating with patient. And another thing, if she, although she is eighteen years old, always ask uh, the patient, "Do you need a help or support from anyone?" Yeah. When you are having breaking the bad news, please try to mm-hmm. address it. Okay, you don't know how the patient will react. Although I have reacted mm-hmm. very nicely, but doesn't mean always the role players will react very nicely. Okay. Mm-hmm. In every station, be uh, be careful regarding breaking the bad news, and here the comes the uh, importance of the lay examiner as well. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mark me. They, uh, they will not give you full marks if you are not uh, breaking the bad news properly. Hmm. Because this is the kind of life alteration statement you can may have to the patient. You are diminishing all her expectations. Remembering that, because you are uh, saying that the she won't be able to have child of her own genetic, right? Hmm. So if you are diminishing all the her life's expectation, it is very, very, very required to breaking the bad news very carefully, very systematically. Okay. Okay. Hmm. That mm. part of communication you certainly need to develop. That's what I think that is the most important feedback. I need to, I need to, to work on it. Okay. okay. I will. I will try to do that. So thank you. Yeah. these things i need to highlight is also that because support teams and ongoing therapy and you need to write it back to the gp also you haven't informed yeah. that as well because mm. gp communication is mandatory in nhs so whatever the things you are knowing whatever the subject you are referring the communication with the gp is the utmost importance in these mm. particular cases gp uh, geneticist and psychology and it better to have utter the term of adolescent health services as well if these things you are mentioning better if this gives an idea that you are working in nhs as well because nhs is all about the structured holistic patient yeah, approach yeah. Mm, yeah yes yes this if you are not attending this time the examiner so will directly know that they, she is uh, over this penetrate does not have knowledge about how the whole system works Okay. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think. Mm-hmm. I think doctors they will add more things. Need. Hmm. 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 Hmm.
Thank you so much. That was a very valuable feedback. Hmm. I, will, I have noted down each and everything. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. I learned a lot. Now, no, no, it's my pleasure. It's, I was always, all of you want to see the pass the exam. That's it. And everybody hmm, sure. from exactly. our team want to pass all of you to exam. That's the other thing. And you need to take this feedback and correct it. Just taking feedback won't be helpful. Hmm. You need to process it at home or practice with your friends as well. Practice mm -hmm. with your kids, practice with your partner. You can do that as well. <laughs> practice oh, with yourself you. in front of mirror. No problem. Yeah, yeah. I am yes. doing this. <laughs> if you don't find anyone, okay, practice with yourself. Listen to yourself. Be your own critic. You know, record yourself and be your own critic and just listen to yourself. What mistakes are you doing or where you are heading into that particular station? I think I think that is enough. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it was very good, in fact. And um, to me, apart from, you know, the everything what Rana has discussed, to me, it was a very plain station. I never find any sympathy. I never found any kind of, uh, you know, the kind of, um, you can say, um, uh, you know, connection between a doctor. Lake seminar will notice this. Uh, yes, I, I was I was being a lake yeah. <laughs> and a very strict one. <laughs> so to yeah, me, uh, Laila, <laughs> you are loaded with information, number one. But the thing is, uh, I felt being a lay examiner because I was not, you know, the uh, being a patient like, you know, the I used to do. So to me, it was a kind of that you knew this station very well. You memorized this station very well. And you were just uttering your lines and you were doing your best to deliver whatever you have memorized from A, B, C, D, E, X, Y, Z template here and there. Okay. So for me, it was a kind of a very, you know, the kind of, uh, uh, I, I must say, you know, the non-sympathetic approach okay it was not really mm. good at all you did not lower down your pace or tone you, your tone was equal if you will listen to the recording yourself you will feel this that you were just telling to the patient that look you know the gale you have got uh, i um, i'm sorry that you don't have uterus but the thing is if if you don't have uterus so you will not have are you are not going to have periods and you are not going to have you know the mm. future yeah Does it work like this no okay so how you have to you know to bring the knowledge again if you are breaking the news for ais it has to be very crucial and i must comment on rana's choice <laughs> it was very brave of him to bring this station because this is a such a hard station looks very easy yeah, it it is, is. You know, a very difficult station to practice in any any you know the online you know the exam okay to me if i have to break the news how am i going to you know the deal with the patient i will say uh, thank you so much, Gail, <clears throat> for giving me this information. I have your report with me. But before I discuss the report, has anyone spoken to you about what test was done this time and why they are being done? No, doctor. No. Okay. So this is very, you know, the plus minus. Would you like to have someone be with you? This is very optional. So you need to or may not be appropriate. And this is going to be a biggest patient safety. And in, in, in that scenario, you can say that I can call my support nurse in and she can sit with you because I have a very concerning news to discuss with you that might be upsetting for you. Okay. So, Gail, your report is with me and I do have an ultrasound and blood reports with me as well. It shows that your hormonal levels are quite high, which are released by the brain. Okay. And ultrasound shows that there is no womb and we have done a genetic testing that shows that you are having, uh, you know, the genes, uh, genetic material, which is 46XY. We call it as androgen insensitivity syndrome. Have you ever heard about it? See, when you are giving a diagnosis, give your diagnosis <laughs> appropriately. Don't make things, you know, the fancy and there and then, because after that, your complete station will start. No, doctor, I don't. I don't. See, uh, so Gail, uh, androgen insensitivity syndrome affects the development of person's genital and reproductive organs. And mm -hmm. you know, all of us have genetic information that we get from our parents, right? And this information is packed in 46 chromosomes and we get 23 from our mom and 23 from our father. So that makes for the girl as 46XX. And therefore, you know, the one can develop ovaries, womb and vagina. On the other hand, most men have chromosomes 46XY. See, now you are coming, stepping, you know, 
towards your diagnosis, how you are breaking. So few women can have chromosomes 46XY. And a result of this, these women do not develop ovaries, womb, and vagina, and cannot have periods, and hence babies. Are you with me, Gail? So she will definitely understand. Oh, so you mean to say I'm a boy? So no, 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 Gail, of course not. You're not, a, you know, the boy at all. There are many things that determine the gender of a person. Okay, it's not only the genetic material that is going to determine. However, it is going to determine that whether you are going to have periods or in the future babies as well. Okay? Yes. You got my point? Yeah. Yeah, then you yeah, say that, you know, I understand that this can come to you as a shock, but the report doesn't change the fact that you are a girl and you are going to be, you know, always a girl as well. Would you like me to tell you more about it? Okay, so then you are going to say that, you know, because you are not having ovaries, you are not having womb. So all the hormones which are coming from brain are not acting up properly. So that's why your all hormones are, you know, the uh, high. Okay, so androgen insensitivity syndrome can be complete. It can be, uh, you know, the partial as well. Okay, so for this, I have to, you know, the look at this thing that, you know, whether your body is acting on the genitals or for the sex development differently or no. So doctor, so all my life was a lie. I was living because this is a very difficult station. Trust me, even in real life. Yeah. As well. yeah. okay. So she is going to tell mm -hmm. you again and again. So my real life was a lie. So I was just being raised as a girl. So you can say that, look, Christy, yes, you, you were being raised as a, you know, the girl because phenotype, you know, the, that is determined by the hormone. So, you know, you can see that, you know, you are a girl, but genetically you know the uterus womb ovaries and you know the vagina is absent that's why you are having some problem at having sex and that's why you are not having periods and you know you're not going to have babies in future as well not all the time you are going to you know remind somebody that look you don't have ovary look you don't have uterus so you cannot have babies okay so you need to be very gentle because this is a very gentle topic then you can mm. say, you can add in and then look, Gail, let me tell you that, you know, the many, uh, you know, the beautiful, uh, uh, you know, the TV host, presenters and broadcasters, newscasters, they are AIS and many of them are doing very well in their respective fields. So there is no way that you need to change your gender. If you are, you know, the sometimes, um, you know, the many, many girls are comfortable with the gender they are, uh, you know, they grew up with and many would like to change. And sometimes, you know, we can label it with gender dysphoria, but it will all depend on how you want to live your life in the future. Because if you want to, you know, the, the live your life as such, as you have been living throughout. So what we need to do is I have to put you in touch with the group of specialists who are going to sit with you, talk to you, that how we can support. <laughs> because at that, at that time, what we need to do is because there is, uh, you know, the gonads, okay, there is a, some, you know, the hormonal structure which is present in your body. So we might need to remove it because if we are not going to remove it, it, it might turn into cancer and that is very rare. However, chances are there, okay? So doctor, so cancer is going to happen. No, no, no. I don't mean to scare you at the moment for this, but yes, uh, I mean to say that it can happen and we have to remove it. So for this, I have to put you in touch with the group of specialists and then we are going to be, you know, the talking again that, you know, how we are going to manage you. Are you with me? Uh, yes, doctor, but I'm so upset. I understand. I understand. Everybody, um, you know, the at your place is going to be upset at this news. So would you like me to, uh, you know, the connect you with the, my nurse, she is going to sit with you to support you. And once you are okay to go home, you can go, right? So you can be here, all right? I will give you a leaflet mm -hmm. about androgen insensitivity syndrome and it is going to be, you know, the um, loaded with the whole information what we have discussed today. Plus, um, you know, we might need to put you in touch with the, uh, you know, the AIS foundation in UK as well. So, you know, you are going to be supported with a couple of people who are having this. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, doctor. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. you know. Close, yeah, like, <laughs> sympathy, yeah. sympathy, yeah, sympathy, sympathy, and Lord so down. I, I completely down. felt that you know, you it was completely lack of sympathy. There was no good sympathy. thing is that you didn't mention that the this is a male chromosome. That is a good thing, I will appreciate. 
because he mm. never mentioned it exactly because one of the old station was like that the biology student is suffering from this condition <laughs> Mm -hmm. Th that's I didn't bring it here because the archaeology uh, in this is a uh, because they do changes the markings code so I, the role player criteria as well although the similar station mm -hmm. that's a good thing you didn't bring up the station because if that station that will be the role player will be kind of very much angry with you yeah. mm -hmm. so every at every point you know you should always remember that you are not you know offending any role player you are not bringing, uh, you know, the fact that he, she is a boy. Okay, if you will say that, like Rana said, that you are a boy, so, you know, she will never talk to you. <laughs> she will say, okay, bye-bye, I'm going. <laughs> right? okay, so, okay. This, this will happen and this has happened. And then yet again, for the sexual problems, you can tell her that, you know, um, <clears throat> we can prescribe you with some moisturizer, some lubricant, some dilator. Yeah. Uh, you know, increase mm -hmm. the size of vagina. So plus um, mm -hmm. you can do certain exercises as well. I will put you in touch with psychosexual counselor as well. They are going to you yeah. know, tell you about the coping strategy, how to deal with this and blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever, whichever sentence you are feasible with. So do bring. Mm -hmm. But I would suggest mold your tone at point. Okay, mold your pace. Yeah. You know, slow I down. Will, I will, Don't just I will work you know, give. And yes, it was very unnecessary. Um, I if if I am a patient, if you are giving me information that we will make baby outside and well, then we will uh, hire a womb and then we will give that baby to come on, that is very pathetic. Okay, IVF should not be you know told like this. <laughs> I think Rana and is patient is specifically <laughs> asking specifically asking that I am can I be able to have a baby. That's the exactly. you need to just simply say that the it may not be possible from your genetic material mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Just okay. simply say like this way you exactly. don't need to explain all the procedure uh, exactly. you are killing the time of your station so hmm. if the patient asks what are my options then we can just so you can say that you know uh, if you IVF if she, and yes, no, not IVF how she can have IVF she doesn't have ovary she doesn't have uterus how she can have IVF IVF with donor, donor, donor yes but, but that is a very late possibility and rare possibility yes. later on so in this scenario, mm -hmm. you can simply say, at the moment, I know this is very much, but if you really want to know that what are your options, so yeah, you can have, uh, you know, the IVF or the test tube baby with the donor eggs, okay? Or you mm -hmm. can use surrogacy. Don't say that we will make egg and we will make sperm, we will make the baby oh, yeah. and then we will hire a womb and then we will give this to the, um, I mean, for me, it is very pathetic, okay? If I'm an exam, oh. I will straight away fail, you know, that candidate who is going to utter such nonsense in exam. Trust me, you know, oh. because oh. This, is, this is something, you know, sensitive. If I'm a patient, if somebody is talking to me, that, you know, um, we are making a baby outside and then we are going to bring that baby into your womb. Does it look nice? No, no. 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 Right? It is It is little bit, you know, the, um, um, I don't know what, but, but it's not good. It's not good at all. Okay. okay. So for every station, in fact, if you have to say IVF, you can simply, you know, the say that IVF is a procedure in which we are going to yeah. do certain, you know, the process and we are going to take eggs from you. We are going to take sperms from your partner. And then, you know, with the help of certain procedures, we are going to perform and we are going to do this, this, this. Okay. No need to say that we are going to make baby and then we are going to bring that baby into your womb. Okay. 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 Because okay. it is I'll not baby. Down. Until and unless heartbeat is there, until and unless it is, for, you know, morphologically a baby. And till then, before it is going to be a zygote, then it is going to be embryo, then it is going to be, you know, the fetus, and then it yeah. is going to be uh, later on. Okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, Thank Shabash, you. Keep practicing. Okay? Just, just work on your tone. Just work oh, on you your face. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so, you. unnecessary yeah, stuff yeah. is not welcomed in exam. Okay, always mm -hmm. yes, because AIS, that. if at all, AIS or if at all, any breaking bad news is there. So don't give her your 80 pages guideline to that patient. She is, come on, she's upset. She's angry. Mm -hmm. She's crying. And you just want to load her with information. You got my point? Oh, yes. I am a yes. patient. If you are giving me such information. I would never speak to you. Mm -hmm. always yeah. always imagine that what if you are a patient and if somebody is giving you this information so how would you feel yeah, okay. yeah. so good 
So always, always do try to, uh, you know, they think that what if I have been treated like this? So how I will feel? So this way, you know, things are going to be very easy. <laughs> okay. Thank you, ma'am. It is very valuable. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay, good. Guys, any question? Mm -hmm. Any question, guys? Is it clear? At least uh, dare to say yes or no. <laughs> I think everything is clear. Maybe. <laughs> no question is also a good question, isn't it? <laughs> okay, anyway, very good, very good. So it was it was a very good discussion. Okay, if, if you guys can learn a few things, if you guys can, uh, you know, the bring, even, you know, it doesn't matter how I speak, how Rana speak, the, the you know, the things which matters the most in exam is how you speak, okay, how you execute the station, okay. So you can bring, you know, any, any of your, you know, the sentence of your choice, there are plenty of leaflets available, there are plenty of things here and there. So try to make your own combination, try to make your own beautiful combination, learn, you know, the every positive thing from every mentor there is and do try to make a, your own cocktail. Okay. All right. That's Thank the most you. Important Thank you, thing, yeah. yeah exactly. That's the most important thing. That's yeah. why I always told the before entering the thing, just process it and structure the your station before mm. so that you can have a clear communication with the patient. Because when you are talking with the patient and thinking in back of your mind, it's kind of difficult. Mm. So before entering the station, just have to have an overview and to structure it clearly and try to process it. That's the most important thing. And I hope I have given you the information how the examiners see your stations as well. That's the thing I want to highlight here or as well. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Over to you, Dr. Zay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so yeah. much. Okay. All right. I think we are taking so long. So, but still mm -hmm. it's, it's a good idea that if you, we do another, um, you know, the station. So Ramya, you wanted to do, right? Yes, ma'am. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. So let me open my slides and then you are going to do this. Okay, so this is for you. Take your two minutes time. Ma'am, uterine cavity size means endometrial thickness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cavity size overall. Overall uterine size. Okay. Yeah. Means overall size, you can simply say. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we can start now. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Uh, hello, I'm Dr. Ramya, one of the doctor in the gynec clinic today. Can I confirm your name and age, please? Yes, doctor. I'm Amanda Thomas and I'm 28 years. Mm -hmm. How would you like me calling you? Yeah, Amanda is fine. Okay. Uh, Amanda, I have gone through your GP letter and uh, I understand that you are bothered with heavy menstrual bleeding and you also had a scan done and you are here to discuss about your management plan, isn't it? Uh, yes, doctor. Actually, I'm so much bothered with this bleeding all the time. Every month I bleed a lot and it's, it's, it's really affecting me now. So I really want a solution that what exactly are my options and, you know, how I can reduce my bleeding and all, because this is really affecting me and my sex life and my, you know, the whole professional life as well. So I, and, and, uh, I understand that this is really bothering your quality of life, Amanda. Surely in the next few minutes, I will explain you uh, what all the treatment options are available and in, de in detail about the scan report. And together we can come to a mutually agreed evidence-based based management plan. But before that, is it okay if I ask a few questions to know more about your condition? Yes, yes, doctor. Uh, yeah, can you tell me more about your uh, concern, Amanda? Um, doctor, actually, first of all, I really want to know that why I'm having this much bleeding. And secondly, you know, what are my options? And third, you know, I am planning to start my family. So, I mean, are there any chances that, you know, I can have baby in future or no? Uh, yeah, surely, Amanda. Yeah, there are options. Uh, definitely, I will address all your concerns, Amanda. Uh, can I know that I can understand that you have been bleeding, bothered by this since two years. Uh, yes. Can I know how much is the flow and how were your cycles? Uh, well, you know, I bleed for about like, I mean, eight to 10 days every month. And, uh, you know, it is it is straight 30 days, but but I bleed for like eight to 10 days. And flow mm -hmm. is so much that sometimes I have to use my, uh, you know, the tampons and pads every hour or so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any history of clots passing, flooding? Uh, yeah, at times, at times. Okay. Yeah. Um, have you tried any treatment for this? Uh, yes, my GP has given me tranexamic acid. So I was taking that, but it's not helping me much anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so your flow is more and you're bleeding for eight to 10 days. Otherwise, your periods are regular, right? Do you have any yes. pain during the period? Yes, yes, doctor. It is it is quite painful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, as you have been bleeding a lot since three years, so uh, have you ever checked your hemoglobin, how, you, how much your blood is? Uh, well, I think my GP has done tests on me, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know okay. It. Well, I'll go through the notes, Amanda. Um, so do you feel any uh, general weakness and easy fatigability? Uh, and any yes, palpitation? Yes, I do. I do. I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, and Amanda, uh, how as before three years, how have your periods been? Yeah, they have always been regular and normal without you know any problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when is your last menstrual period now? Uh, it was for about fifteen days ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can I know about your uh, pregnancies? Have you ever been pregnant before? Uh, no, doctor, but but me and my partner, we are due to get married in like six months time. So we are really hoping to start our family. Okay. Uh, are you on any contraception right now? Uh, yeah, we, we, we do just practice condoms. And, um, you know, nonetheless, this, this bleeding is really bothering me and affecting my sex life as well. Yeah, I'm really sorry to hear that, Amanda. Yeah. Amanda, some of my questions may be very personal, but these questions have to ask you to give you the best management. So can I proceed? Yes, yes, please. Uh, has, uh, I understand that it has been bothering your sexual life. So can I know if you have any pain up during the intercourse or any bleeding after intercourse? Mm, no, no, not as such. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, have you ever, uh, did you or your partner ever had any sexually shared infections in the past? Mm, for me, never. But for my partner, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, sorry to ask this, Amanda. You need to choose multiple sexual partners. Uh, no, 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 doctor. I'm, I'm with my partner okay. and we are together for the last five years. Yeah, no. sorry for that, Amanda. Sorry to ask that. Yeah, uh, can I know you, how do you regular on your cervical smears? Uh, yes, I had one and it was normal. Okay. Uh, do you have any other medical problems, Amanda? No, generally I'm fit and well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just to add on, did you notice any bleeding in between your periods? Uh, no, never. Okay. Have you noticed any loss of weight or appetite in the recent past? 
uh not loss of weight but yeah i feel myself that i have you know they become weak and i cannot concentrate much on my work i work as a secretary but i get tired mm-hmm. so easily so it is really bothering me now mm-hmm. i see yeah definitely will try solution for this amanda um uh, do you have any allergies no doctor not as such okay any surgeries in the past uh no okay any significant family history of cancer Mm, like like any clots in the families any history of cancers of uh, uh, womb mm, or anything no no not as such okay uh, how is the support at home yeah i i am i'm with my partner and we are living together and so far everything is so good mhm okay good to hear that uh, if you personal questions do you smoke mm, just occasionally do you take alcohol and recreational drugs uh alcohol yes but no drugs okay uh, uh i'm and i just wanted to uh, tell you that smoking and alcohol is not good for general health and also it causes uh, decrease of your body fighting capacity and also leads to health problems so if any that of quitting i can help you by putting you in touch with the stop smoking and stop alcohol mm-hmm. services okay if if it can help me so i i i would i would do that no problem yeah yeah surely can i know your weight weight ratio the bmi uh i think it is 27 or 28 mhm okay uh electel on a higher side so have you tried anything for this no doctor i think i'm okay yeah okay uh if you want i can put you in touch with dietitian and uh, uh, physiotherapy uh, exercise services okay. uh yeah amanda yeah uh, can i know your blood group i think it is o positive i think mhm okay just to add on any problem with the bubble or bladder water works or bubble habits mm, not as such doctor okay no pain in your tummy right no no not as such okay thank you for sharing all this information amanda would you like to add anything to this uh so no, doctor but i would be like i mean kind of uh, i I, re- i would really appreciate if you could just tell me that you know what are my options because i'm so tired of this bleeding 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 all the time yeah surely amanda uh, uh before i expl- i have confirmed the name and just number over the report as well and uh, the scan shows that amanda I, uh, actually if you can follow me in this diagram this is the womb this is the ovaries on either side and this is the lining of the womb actually the scan shows that there is a small growth uh, which is uh, in a, a innocent growth you can say it is about a small growth 2 into 2 cm in the muscle of the womb uh, and usually sometimes this can cause excessive bleeding but as this is small sometimes this may not be also responsible for the excessive bleeding you have been experiencing and mm-hmm. there are various other causes for this excessive bleeding as well which can be like any imbalance of the hormones mm-hmm. uh, like if the periods or not uh, if there is no egg release uh, or any other hormonal imbalance like any thyroid abnormalities mm-hmm. uh, this all also can cause uh, this uh, problem so what we will do is amanda i can um, Uh, i can do i would advise you to do certain investigations that is we'll check how your hemoglobin is that is the mm-hmm. blood as you are also feeling fatigue and uh, weakness okay. and we'll also do uh, some uh, if at all any uh, cold and heat intolerance you have we can uh, go for a uh, thyroid test as well and uh, and then we can start you on certain medications uh, and your uh, treatment will be uh, taken care of by a team of specialist doctors which include my consultant gynecologist and the imaging specialist doctor the specialist nurse and uh, uh, the uh, physiotherapist as well and the uh, physiotherapist mm-hmm. as well yeah okay. so um, amanda uh, what uh, usually for such patients as a first line of treatment we give certain hormonal medications uh, mm-hmm. preferably the hormonal coil uh, which will be inserted inside the womb Uh, to thin the lining of the womb so that the bleeding stops mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, but as in your case you have been fa- planning for the pregnancy um, we can what we can do is we can give hormonal pills there is a progesterone pills for you initially to control your bleeding right now and mm-hmm. once your cycles are a little regular then we can stop the pills and we can go for the um, we can go for planning of pregnancy but before that i would like to uh, suggest you to arrange for a detailed scan because the scan shows uh, uh, there is a small fibroid but i want to know exactly what is the thickening of the lining of the womb mm-hmm. and if that all there is excessive thickening of lining of womb we may advise for a camera test to see inside the womb 
mm-hmm. and to see if any abnormal areas to see to examine for tissue any biopsy is required mm-hmm. yeah okay amanda am mm-hmm. i clear so far uh yes doctor yes yes i'm with you i'm with you so doctor yeah. um well your time is up but still you know continue then we will see yeah so doctor uh, i mean i i really want to conceive in future like i mean in 6 months time we are planning to start our family so i mean uh, would that be possible uh yeah it is possible amanda but first of all we will we, we would like to control your bleeding now so mm-hmm. for this month uh, i can start you on hormonal medicine the progesterone medication to control mm-hmm. your bleeding and um, and also we can give you some hematmix after seeing your blood and mm-hmm. once your condition is uh, uh, a little better like once your bleeding controls then we can plan for the pregnancy uh, after in the next 2 to 2 to 3 cycles once you are better okay amanda okay okay fine yeah um, so i will give you information leaflet regarding this condition amanda and uh, also we, in if the hormone in the hormones we have multiple options as well i want to tell you there is the progesterone and if this progesterone are not able to regularize your cycle we can give combined pills which also helps to regularize your cycles as well and mm-hmm. even we have uh, uh, like uh, progesterone injections as well uh, i will i can discuss with you in detail about this when need arises if all the medicines fail then we have the option of uh, uh, the thinning the lining of the womb by certain procedures called ablation but these are not suitable for you as we have been uh, as we are planning uh, in a plan of uh, pregnancy in future mm-hmm. uh, yeah so this is not the timing for all this amanda anyway when i need arises i can discuss in detail about all the options mm-hmm. i'll give you information leaflet regarding these conditions you can go through that and i'll book an appointment with my consultant in two weeks as well Okay Amanda. Okay okay fine doctor fine thank yeah. you. Yeah thank you for your time. Yeah. Oh Ramya how is it? Um uh, I was little confused in the management plan how to say ma'am because uh, based on the endometrial thickness I was thinking like she doesn't have higher BMI and mm-hmm. only heavy menstrual period so I think she doesn't require any biopsy we can start on hormonal pills. but if it is thick and lining we have to start uh, we have to do biopsy in this dilemma i confuse the management mm. and uh, do you think you justified with the management or did you give any kind of clear plan uh, yeah because basically i am confused i didn't give clear plan no you didn't give anything sweetheart let me tell you that you took almost 7 minutes and 20 7 minutes and 20 second in history okay Seven but these all or i try to gather as quickly as possible ma'am but this is my problem i was not able always no, history is taking long you, time the whole uh, i mean uh, 50% of the history was unnecessary which was not mm-hmm. needed in hmb hmb is personal problem right mm-hmm. does it have to do anything with any other problem dvt cancer or blah 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 when we have a very clear you know the reason that she is having 2 into 2 cm fibroid and cavity mm-hmm. size is 8 cm and normal outline outline mean endometrial endometrium is normal and cavity size mm-hmm. mean the uterus size is normal okay mm-hmm. and what okay. is first line management of hmb marina you should have marina yeah i told marina mom but she is planning for pregnancy so i told so pills marina again can, marina can no 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 sweetheart marina can be given at the moment she is having pain as well painful hmb so marina will reduce dysmenorrhea marina will reduce hmb and in the 6 month time when she wants to become pregnant she can remove it and later on she can be kept on you know some other uh, treatment because marina uh, it's not necessary she said that i'm we are going to plan it doesn't mean that she will be pregnant in 6 months time right mm-hmm. so it's not like that so first of all uh, okay now you tell me then i will critically analyze <laughs> as per my yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so please don't hate me for that because i i really you know the listen to each and every word and i do try to analyze and do try to give you know the constructive feedback because this yes. is where you can learn and this is where you can cut your history short this is where you can cut your sentences short and you can bring the best out of your own station okay so now tell me where do you think because all together if i just listen to this uh, fluency very good pace very good but involvement with patient no no involvement okay 
involvement in terms of you know the coming to the you have yourself you have said we will come to mutually agreed safe acceptable blah 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 i don't know the the, the long uh, you know the pretty phrase so did you come to mutually agreed safe agreeable evidence based management plan mm. yes, uh, so no but i asked about uh, her concerns and uh, so her concerns uh, were her concerns were that she yeah. is with this hmb she wants solution and later she wants to become pregnant and she wants to know that i mean is she going to have any problem so did you alleviate mm -hmm. all these concerns no mm -hmm. right did you give mm -hmm. mutually agreed safe acceptable i don't know what 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 you guys say please tell repeat i don't know <laughs> that that is a very beautiful phrase <laughs> i hear it every other day but trust me you know if you really are using that phrase so use you know everything accordingly okay, okay. coming to this see you know sweetheart what was the need of asking multiple sex partner is it going to affect hmb mm -hmm. or your management yeah yeah i asked for the template i asked but after <laughs> i asked i felt unnecessary <laughs> but so, i can't take multiple sex partner yeah. see sweetheart multiple sex partner cut okay yes. was it necessary to ask you know the family history of concern what is family history of concern my mother had like had endometrial a... cancers no no, oh. no no be specific if you have asked me is there any family history of concern yes doctor my mother is having headache terrible headache and i'm very upset about her because mm -hmm. this is my concern mm -hmm. if you want to ask any particular concern so be very open and ask very clearly that you know is is anybody else in your family having similar condition or you know the cancer mm -hmm. of the bowel ovary womb or any part of the body because mm -hmm. clot in leg nothing has to do diabetes has nothing has to do hypertension until unless she is generally fit and well so don't ask she has told you i'm generally fit and well so don't ask multiple question you got my point okay yes, so with 2 and 2 cm you try and fibroid how you can cut your history short let me tell you you are going to ask don't repeat question to her first of all okay so you can start your um, you know this session you can say hi i'm ramya one of the doctor in the clinic today so can i cross check your name and age please yes can i call you amanda yes so amanda i have a letter from your gp and uh, you know i can see that you are troubled with the heavy menstrual bleeding am i correct yes doctor don't okay finish now you are going to start okay so amen i am going to be talking about and i have your skin scan report as well and i will be telling you about scan report and i will be talking about how we are going to manage you uh, before that let me ask you that do you have any particular concern to discuss in today's consult yes doctor blah 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 mm, yes i understand and these are very valid concern i will try to you know the answer uh, all these you know the concerns and question and still if something uh, is going to be there i will put you in touch with my consultant is that okay yes doctor then amanda can you please tell me in your own words so she will start giving you whole history yes doctor i am having for the last two years and it is really i understand i understand it must be very painful it must be very stressful isn't it yes doctor okay so if you want to inquire anything particular because we really want to know postquartal bleeding dyspareunia dysmenorrhea she already had so we want to know postquartal bleeding we want to know intermenstrual bleeding so you are going mm -hmm. to ask amanda um, have you ever noticed that have you ever um, you know the blood after having sex or between two cycles no doctor see very small short sentence and you are done imb pcb is done okay so have you or your partner ever been uh, diagnosed and treated with sexually shared infection no doctor okay fine okay apart from that amanda have you ever had any kind of uh, you know the operation in, in your tummy or down below no doctor okay Uh, are you generally fit and well yes doctor see and it was very good of you that you inquired about any of your symptoms so it was good so add add in there apart from that do you have any problem with the water work or bowel work no doctor no everything is fine i'm just troubled with this bleeding okay okay i'm coming to that amanda don't worry see you know be reassuring as well be normal as well be gentle as well we should not be a robot in exam okay we are dealing with humans like we do deal every day with our patients as well so do take it as a you know the patient as well in real exam too okay so uh, yes. can you uh, ramya can you see that you know how we have cut down our history which is important okay yes, which is another important uh, thing which you can cut i am smoking i am drinking so did you ever ask that how many cigarettes i am smoking no mm -hmm. right if you have mm -hmm. to put somebody in touch with nhs stop smoking cessation or alcohol services 
you need to at least be assured uh, you know the um, that how much or how much amount she's you know the consuming so if i'm mm. bring if i'm having just one cigarette a day so i mean you can simply tell her that you know it, it's a very good idea that if you uh, you know they quit smoking altogether or if i'm smoking five to six cigarettes okay it's a good idea that you know if you cut down on your smoking or if you stop smoking altogether because altogether uh, you know smoking is not um, healthy for anyone there is okay and same goes for alcohol don't put everybody into in touch with an just stop smoking suggestion services <laughs> it means you are mm -hmm. overburdening your colleagues you don't care about your colleagues anymore you just care about yourself because you have to finish your station okay you got my point <laughs> yeah <laughs> so this way you know you can cut and really if you want like, to bring this stop smoking stop smoking so you can give you know the suggestion yourself you are a doctor isn't it you can give suggestion mm -hmm. yourself that meant right. like hmm. like if they say more than 5 to 6 cigars per day i can she, if she says that you know uh, that you know uh, doctor uh, i am smoking half pack a day you know 10 cigarettes a day mm -hmm. okay. quite a lot isn't it okay. sir, i'm mm -hmm. i'm smoking like i mean 8 to 9 cigarettes a day that, that's that's also quite a lot so you can simply say that um, uh, amanda have you ever thought of quitting smoking no doctor but is, is it going to help me Uh, well, you know, smoking, quitting smoking is going to be generally good for your health. Okay, so or, or it might, you know, help you in your general health and you know this and that. Okay, okay, fine, doctor. If it can, I, I will try. So if she says no, doctor, I have never thought of. So don't bring your NHS stop smoking suggestion everywhere. It's not going to work, and it is not going to bring you any extra point. Mind it. Okay. 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 yeah trust me yeah you know because we work in a very harmony there and uh, of course we are going to be thinking that you know whether you are overburdening your fellow colleagues or no and mm -hmm. in terms of you know the whether you want to you know the uh, connect her to alcohol or blah 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 but don't unnecessarily do that so if you will cut your this part again you are gaining your one minute i think you you took uh, you know the i think 30 or 45 second to address mm -hmm. smoking part and alcohol part and then when it comes to bmi it was 27 although it was you know the no, from normal to overweight so you can simply say if she knew that i think doctor i am okay uh, well i mean you you can simply say that you know you can start doing your exercises and you know the ideal bmi if you really want to you know put stress on bmi however bmi has nothing to do with this hmb at the moment this fibroid is causing a lot of problem so address this this is scan is clearly telling you that you have to talk about myrena normal outline normal endometrium right cavity size is 8 cm okay so if it is less than 10 cm we can you know the easily put myrena okay normal outline and uh, most common type of the fibroid is what submucosal or intramural so yeah it is going to help and what you need to do is you have to describe this fibroid very well don't say that it is a been uh, what did you say non cancerous or uh, innocent growth if i'm not wrong right so yes. but but fibroid is what fibroid itself is what how do you define fibroid um uh, benign means uh, i thought it will be jargon mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no no innocent is fine so how do you how do you you know the kind of um, describe fibroid proliferation of the muscle fibers hmm muscle growth okay mm -hmm. it's an excessive growth of the uh, muscle fibers and you know the uh, muscle fibers and what happens is because the muscle of the womb are rich in blood supply so every month if if there is any growth so every month these fibers will have rich blood supply that's why you will bleed more that's why you know you are having this um, you know the pain during periods or during cycle okay because you know the um, bleeding is there and and you know the uh, muscle fibers are making this fibroid okay mm -hmm. so then you are going to ask that okay your gp has prescribed you with tranexamic acid so was it helping you uh, yes kind of kind of okay then you will come to your management part okay so you will say that okay you know the uh, i understand that you know uh, you are um, you know the uh, having this problem so let me tell you that we have got couple of options to treat this you know the fibroid so i can see that you are having fibroid fibroid is an excessive muscle growth of the womb 
and it bleeds and because muscle fiber are rich in blood supply so you bleed every month and that's why you are having pain during cycle as well and uh, the heavy bleeding reason of the heavy bleeding is fibroid okay i can see that you know your size of the womb is quite normal and uh, the outline of the womb is also normal so there is no other pathology all right so coming back to the options so let me tell you that we have got a couple of options to treat you at the moment and we have got you know the hormonal options we have got non hormonal options okay non hormonal options are going to be tranexamic acid and mefenamic acid so we can give you while you are going to start your periods and uh, you know they are going to reduce the blood flow up to 50% of the cases or 50 out of 100 women can be benefited with both and also it can reduce the pain during the periods however the first line treatment for hmb is going to be the mirena mirena coil have you ever heard about it uh, well doctor one of my friend um, has you know they mentioned this to me and i have seen on internet as well yes so guidelines have recommended that the first line treatment for hmb is going to be the mirena Mirena coil is is a copper is you know the similar to the copper T you know the device so it is going to be a T shape uh, you know the kind of device and it is going to be impregnated with the hormone and that hormone will release on daily basis okay and it is going to uh, reduce the blood flow and it is also going to reduce the pain during periods as well. Are you with me? Are you with me? Oh yes, doctor, I'm with you. I'm I'm with you. Okay. And but doctor, I want to get pregnant in future. So what will happen? Uh, look, you know what will happen is that initial six months you might be having you know there's some kind of problem. Okay, you might be having some you know the breakthrough bleeding or spotting in between, and uh, you know but but you know the later on it is going to be okay. And anytime whenever you would like to become pregnant, you can remove it, and you know the your return of the the, uh, spontaneous egg release will come back okay mm, all right doctor and apart from that you you do have you know the pills and injectables as well so in terms of pills we do have uh, the um, you know the combined hormonal contraceptive pills we do have uh, progesterone only pills and injectables we do have progesterone injections as well however if we give injections so return of uh, you know the ovulation or egg release can be delayed okay Okay, okay, doctor. And, uh, you know, the during this, uh, so doctor, when can I fit it? Uh, well, we can, we can fit it, it any day of the cycle, as long as you're not pregnant. But preferably, we recommend that, you know, in the first seven days of cycle. Okay, so some women may experience some side effects, such as because it has hormone, progesterone. So sometimes you can have mood swings, skin problems, breast tenderness, and very rarely small risk of infection and, and tummy pain as well. Okay, but with simple painkillers, I mean, it can get uh, resolved. Okay, mm, okay. So perhaps I missed this, but in this patient, because this is also one of the uh, exam question. So this patient had migraine. Okay, so if somebody has migraine, so combined pills are not going to be, uh, you know, uh, suitable for her, of course. So, you know, the, uh, and for the family, we have, you know, the, uh, and then hormonal, non-hormonal, then surgical options. Then surgical options are going to be removal of the myoma, but you can say that since the size is so small, so we can try, you know, the with this myrena for like six months time and we can see what is the effect. However, operation is going to be there that we can remove this fibroid and the last resort is going to be the removal of the womb. However, this is not the option for you at the moment at all. Okay. But, mm -hmm. you know, you have to give all options in one, one line. Okay, Ramya, are you with me? Hmm? Yes, yes. Okay, one more thing you said, which I remember now, that I will send hemoglobin. I will send if you have cold or heat intolerance. Why if? You oh, didn't ask sir. in history. So Yes, so there I remember, ma'am. So hmm. I... Let me tell you, sweetheart, that you don't have to run unnecessary investigation as well. Okay, mm -hmm. because you are going to be answerable for even full blood count. You have to justify that. Why do you want to do full blood count? What is the rationale behind? <laughs> okay, so thyroid uh, function test. Uh, however, you know, the if you have asked in, in your history, for example, if in this case, you know, this uh, fibroid is not the case and you are just having HMB. So in that scenario, you might, you know, the exclude thyroid as well. Okay, so mold, mold your template, you know, cut your history short. And bring your own, you know, the sentences. Bring your management with one, 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 one line, and your life is easy. 
okay yes. and and yes. involve patient much rather than you know uh, giving her loads and loads of information and loads or loads of whatever you know uh, i think this yes. is a good idea that you involve patient you alleviate her concerns you and now see you know mutually agreed safe acceptable evidence based management plan is it right yes. we have given choices number 1 now we have agreed to marina because she said when can i fit it and it is evidence based as well and i think it is safe as well and it is acceptable as well right mm -hmm. so justify whatever you are you know the uttering in exam <laughs> this exam is all about justify justify and justify okay clear okay. now hmm? yeah mm -hmm. okay one more thing sorry i missed it and i i just saw on my notes mdt what is the need of mdt in this mm -hmm. Um, is it cancer? No, ma'am. Mm. <laughs> so no, it's... just as a gynecologist, we can yes. exactly, exactly. You just have to give her options. Even GP mm. can fit Marina, so you will send back. You will send her back to my, you know, the GP. Close the loop. Mm. That's it. This is your job to give her factual information, and there is no need to bring so many fancy fancy stuff. Okay, so cut your MDT, cut your cold and heat test. And seven minutes and 20 minutes was too much for me. I was having nausea that when is she going to start, you know, the anxiousness and nausea that when is she going to start management? <laughs> so don't do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mold your history, sweetheart. Mold your history. Otherwise you are fluent. You know your syllabus, but try to bring, uh, you know, the actual and factual information. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Great. Yeah, thank good you. job, good job, good job. Clear everyone, any question? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay, brilliant, brilliant. So let me close my loop because we were on how we are going to uh, utilize our last month. So see, you know, we have planned our, you know, the last month activity. We have scheduled, we have done our practice, one with Dr. Anna, one with me. And now you will book your flight and you will go to London if you have to go to Royal College building or if you have to go to any overseas center, of course, you will go there. All right. And then, of course, your exam day will start. So on the exam night, uh, ulipristal acetate, you can mention as much as possible. Okay. You can mention whatever you think. But yes, it can be, it can be mentioned according to guideline. Okay. But, you know, the first line management will remain, Marina, isn't it? <laughs> so I would rather suggest, I would rather suggest that stay focused and, you know, the bring the best out of yourself rather than uttering whole guideline. If you will just stick to your, you know, the station yourself, I think that is going to be a good idea. All right. So let me conclude with with few more slides. I think it is taking long and, uh, but no problem. So for the two minutes time, again, Read task carefully. Check what domains are being tested in this task. Don't start making keys. I'm so sorry to say, I do see, uh, you know, the candidates around who are making, you know, the long, long, long keys. I will say this, I will say this, this is this, this is this, this is this. This way you can miss important information from the question, isn't it? Because what if you have missed that it is a referral letter from GP or midwife and you have to send back to them as well. Me, myself, have always trained myself that how am I going to start my station? Because when I was a student like you, I used to struggle with, you know, the starting point. That from where to start, you know? So I think many of you might be or many of you might not be. But trust me, this is a very tricky part. How you are going to start your station, okay? Um, it's a good idea that if you break the ice, because, you know, when we communicate with somebody, we always say good morning, good evening, good, good afternoon. And I think if it is not a breaking bad news or angry patient or anything, you can always say for the structured discussion as well. Hello, um, hello, good morning. Like me, myself, I introduce myself. Hello, I'm Dr. Qureshi, one of the doctor in the clinic today. Can I check your name and age, please? Hello, good morning. You know, I'm, I'm Dr. Qureshi, one of the doctor in the urogynecology clinic, because I know this is not a breaking bad news. This is not something which needs a lot of, uh, you know, the communication or something, right? So you can also be normal. So be normal, behave normal in exam. Read question again and again. So not to miss any important information. 
Okay, sometimes, you know, the candidates miss a lot of information because if loads of loads of information is given outside, it means you just need to bring, you know, the very less information, which is important for management. And please, 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 all of you guys be extremely careful. It is not mandatory to bring your set template in every question. Okay, you can always mold your template, your history, according to the station. All right. And then 10 minutes, look confident, walk very, you know, the calmly, enter into the cubicle, introduce yourself, familiarize yourself with the cubicle. How many people are there? If it is structured discussion, you will just see one examiner and you yourself. If it is role player task, you will see examiner as well as role player and you. Okay. If it is lay examiner, if you see three people in cubicle apart from you, then it is going to be lay examiner. All right. Then again, you know, don't look at examiner or lay examiner at all after doing, you know, something, something which you feel that you did good. So don't expect any, any bravo, any brilliant, any, any, you know, anything from any examiner. They're not going to show any emotion, any, any kind of, you know, the um, expression as well. Okay. So don't expect any pat on your shoulder <laughs> that if you have done something good. All right. So make sure that you are, you know, the behaving very, um, you know, the, uh, a very composed, confident candidate. Okay, just focus on your role player. Just, just take in the cues. If you are missing anything, if role player is trying to tell you anything, try not to offend role player at all. Try not to bring unnecessary stuff at all. Try to finish your task with respective domains as well. For example, if, if the task is about that, please do talk to Miss Daisy and tell her about the management of epilepsy. So just tell her about management. No need to go um, family history of concern. If you want to ask family history of concern, be very specific. Is anybody else in the family having, you know, the epilepsy or any other medical disorder? Simple, you know, don't simply say and don't be so vague in exam. Even if you have finished your station before the bell rings, sit comfortably. Don't exchange glances with anyone in the cubicle. Okay, sit comfortably. Don't, don't, you know, the um, make any faces. Don't scratch your head. Don't scratch your leg. Don't scratch and don't try to, you know, the comb your hairs as well <laughs> with your fingers. It looks very, you know, the bad. It, it gives very bad impression. All right. And do try to close the loop in station. Starting point should be very crisp. Check if it is a GP or midwife referral. Perform your station with respective domain. Write back to GP. In the end, give her the patient information leaflet and thank her. If it is a good station, okay, tell her. Okay, for example, if she has just conceived and, you know, the uh, her pregnancy test is positive, but along with complications. So, you know, the, tell her about, you know, the uh, pregnancy journey. Okay, congratulations. If it is breaking bad news, if you have to give any kind of, uh, you know, the miscarriage news or anything, don't say congratulations at all. Okay. Uh, um, all right. I'm, I'm coming to it, Devi. I'm coming to it. Okay. So this was all about uh, the last, you know, the one month and after exam, you know, be like them. Happy. Okay. Contented. Whatever you have done, it's done. It's not going to change the outcome. Even if you are going to stress out, even if you are going to cry, even if you are going to be happy, if you are, you know, the traveling overseas, try exploring, you know, the cities, try exploring new places. Okay. Relax your neurons, relax your minds, and then, you know, come back home. That's it. All right. So this is all about, you know, how we are going to plan our last month before, uh, you know, the exam. I think it is pretty doable. All you need to do is just, just stay calm, stay confident, stay focused. Focus is very necessary. Okay. Okay, now one question. Specific dress code? No, sweetheart. There is no specific dress code, but as long as you are comfortable, so it is okay. So professional attire for any exam usually is like pant coat, you know, if you are comfortable with that. So I would advise. Me myself have worn, you know, the pant coat as well. Okay, so it was, a, uh, you know, the black pant, black coat along with white shirt and, uh, you know, the uh, scarf. Okay, for me. For you, I think it is doable. But if you have, you know, the hairs which are long, so do try to tie your hairs. Okay, it should not be open. Don't wear a lot of makeup, no jewelry at all. Just, you know, the wristwatch if you want to. Uh, no rings, no bangles, no nothing. And no earrings, no, uh, you know, the tikka, jhumar, blah, blah, blah. No nothing. 
okay and uh, you know the colors should be very uh, you know the um, this black blue white you know the light shades sky blue you know the tea pink shade it should not be very uh, you know the uh, i must say eye catchy kind of thing orange green parrot green you know the shocking thing <laughs> blah 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 so it looks very weird so you have to be you know comfortable shoes um, we have spoken about earlier shoes should be comfortable uh, try not to wear you know the heels which are making noise because if you are in london so london has you know the wooden floor so it causes a lot of noise okay and uh, that's it i think right any question guys any question any question anam anjuman arbaba aisha devi humaira ifat maryam laila saroja ramya everyone okay okay brilliant <laughs> okay okay brilliant okay so these two cases are very important guys okay so revise them so you are going to be having uh, you know the recording soon on uh, you know the youtube channel of med exam expert so anyone who is interested in taking mocks with me dr rana with any of our team members so you are more than welcome to join us and me myself will be so happy to coach you will be so happy to be part of your success as well all right so <laughs> thank you so much humaira thank you so much thank you so much means a lot and uh, we will be doing uh, you know the another session me and rana soon and uh, do try to subscribe our channel do try to subscribe our facebook page as well so you will not miss any information okay so because before november exam we are going to have series of uh, you know the uh, sessions all right so uh, how to identify how who is role player oh yeah very good examiner will look as an examiner <laughs> saroja and role player basically let me tell you uh, usually what happens is let's draw a very you know the vague picture this is going to be your entering door okay this is going to be table the person who is across the table is always examiner <laughs> the person who is on the side is going to be role player and you yourself will sit here okay candidate if they have a lay examiner so they both will sit in front of the table saroja hmm clear so this is a you know the the you know the kind of um, vague picture all right so usually almost 90 to 95% of the cases role player is going to be sitting on the side of the table okay and you can see the the examiners and lecturer do have check boxes in their hand exactly <laughs> the whole literally you, yeah you won't be confused because uh, whenever you will enter you will definitely have a idea who is the role player mm -hmm. don't worry about that yes 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 hmm. and don't think about who is the examiner and who is the lecturer <laughs> don't think no, no, about no. that also avoid eye, eye contact with examiner not yeah. role player you will have eye contact with role player yeah. okay even if you try to make eye contact mm -hmm. they won't they won't they won't they will just yeah. they will just you know look at their the huge you know the big number of you know the pages in front of them yeah you will see all right all right so thank you so much guys uh, i think uh, you guys have been brilliant um, you know the lela very good ramya very good just just take the feedback positively okay try to brush up whatever me and rana did try to give you the feedback okay so you can improve on you can always take you know the your own uh, lead on your own self okay you can always improve you can always bring your own sentences and there is no hard and fast rule that okay you have to give your set template first and then you have to bring you know the a lot of information all right okay very good so see you guys some other time okay take good care of yourself uh, your health as well self care is very important okay so we will see you guys some other time as well if anybody is interested in taking mock with me rana or any of our team member okay so do contact us thank you so much bye bye good night thank you rana thank you med exam team thank you yeah thank you dr deep thank you everyone for joining with us it was very good in fact <laughs> yeah 
ओके ओके थैंक यू गुड नाइट